Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Gabe. Michael. Michael here. And uh, we got a very exciting show for you guys today. Um, we are going to be uh, looking at an amazing collection. I oh, mean, yeah. this, is, this is definitely one that I've been I've been wanting to show. Now, I guess we should kind of prepare everybody because yes. although Although it's a huge collection and all that, um, I think Joseph was was kind enough to to join us before setting it all up. And the plan is to kind of follow his his progress along, right? And yeah. I think this first episode we're gonna show kind of where he's at, but he's still probably about only a third of his stuff is is out on display. So he still has a little while to go. So yeah. I just wanted to. To kind of say that um uh, michael anything yeah but before we we kick this show off i i would just uh in behalf of gabe and me i just would like to say thank you guys so much for the i mean it's unbelievable right gabe the, the amount of the comments and mm -hmm. and the, the feedback that we're getting on our show it just energizes Gabe and I so much yeah. to move forward and doing what we do. And, and like all you guys tuning in, which we thank you on a Saturday night, we are we just are having so much fun and are very humble, Gabe and I, to be able to bring these wonderful, whether they're highlighted guests that have these amazing collections or these artists that we've been bringing in. We've got so yeah. many really cool things right Gabe to bring in but before we get started and kick this one off I just wanted to say on behalf of Gabe and I thank you guys so much for the wonderful comments it's unbelievable the feedback that we're getting and we're pumped to kick off collection wars this is what five episode five already Gabe Te I mean technically six but yeah technically yeah. It's, okay it's yeah, because we did that one live after um, that's right last that's Saturdays. Right. Yeah, so the other thing I wanted to to mention, and we, we, me and Michael, were talking about this. Yeah, obviously, as as we're going along, right, we're we're kind of starting up pretty big, right? Like a lot of these first episodes, we're having some crazy, amazing collections happening. <laughs> so I think yeah. the one thing I wanted to to let everybody know is that obviously we're gonna be showing you guys some of these collections because we're in 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 awe right looking at them but obviously it's it's not always about about the size of the collection all that again i think for us we're looking for the people that that are passionate about the collection and that are really you know they they take their time to display it and again it doesn't have to be this huge collection um it's just more about what it means to them right, right. and i think that's the whole focus of the show is really more about what Star Wars and what Star Wars collectibles and collecting really means to everybody, right? Not really about showing off, you know, the, the actual pieces, although that's a huge part of it. <laughs> of course. And of course, what Collection Wars does to our future viewers, our audience that are watching in tonight and in the future is that we want to help inspire because right. Gabe and us, and me are we're inspired by the collections that we get to see and and the ideas. I mean, still, no matter how like Gabe was saying, I I still I'm like, oh man, I well, that's a great idea, and, and we're learning as we go, and that's what's so great. And Gabe, I just want you to know, brother, man, I am so happy to be a part, you know, sharing this this awesome collaboration and yeah adventure that we are. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's been a, a fun ride already so yes, far. It has. So I think we should, let's get the show started. I want to, before we introduce Joseph, I want to let you in into his, into his collection room, which he's in currently. So <laughs> without further ado, let's, let's go into his collection room. Sounds good. Uh-huh. Yeah, guys. Yeah, that's right. Let me play that again for you guys. That is the entrance to his collection room. Yes. Oh my God, Joseph. There he is, buddy. 
Let me let me put you on, on the big screen here. Thank you Hi, so guys. much for joining us again. And thank you for being part of this, this little adventure we're going to go through with your collection. Thank you. It's uh, it's great to be here. I'm really honored that you guys asked me to come on again. I know I was on last week to just chat with you guys from my workshop, but uh, yeah. it's great to be back again. And um, and uh, thank you for uh, for all you guys are doing uh, for the community. It's really really great to see um, all of the interviews and the people that you're having on. I really enjoyed the show with Kurt Kuhn. Um, yeah. of uh, Modeler Magic. That's an incredible website. I absolutely love it. It's actually one of the things that has served uh, as an inspiration to me uh, in building models and setting up my display room. Actually, that's how I first saw your display room, Michael, um, was yeah. on Modeler Magic when you were building that and the construction right. folks were getting yep. up there. Yeah. And it was a huge inspiration. And Gabe, uh, you know, I've told you this many times. I was watching you many years ago uh, when I started collecting Master Replicas pieces and seeing your display room, and it served as an inspiration to me as well. So thank you. It's like I said, it's an honor to be on here, and I'm glad that I can share all of this with you guys. Uh, that's really the best part of all of this is uh, is sharing it. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then you Again, you're you're a friend and a, a great mm -hmm. stand-up guy. So I mean, we're we're happy to have you on today. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's let's kind of jump into it really quick. Um, before we get into the room and before we get into the collection, I I wanted to ask you, what exactly got you into collecting? And not only that, but what got you into collecting such different types of collections? So this, this, there were actually a couple of avenues uh, into which, um, uh, or that got me into collecting. And one of them is from childhood. I was a huge Star Trek fan, huge Star Wars, uh, Star Wars fan. And I used to love building models. And so not only did I build models, but you start to collect. Anybody who's a model builder out there probably is aware that you start to collect model kits much much more than you can actually build. And so there are people that have what they call their stash, you know, of model kits. And uh, and building models and putting them on display was really, really exciting for me. Uh, and then as uh, I got older, I kind of had to put the model building on hold as I went through school and everything. Um, but uh, once I had the time, mm -hmm. I got back into model building. Uh, but not just that, I really got to rediscover all of those um, properties that I really loved, like Star Trek and Star Wars uh, and Marvel Comics, DC Comics, uh, and old science fiction stuff, Japanese anime. I mean, you know, I have a, a huge uh, breadth of interest. So, um, so rediscovering all of that really inspired me to start to look at the things, at the physical things that represent those interests. And I think what, what really kind of got my foot in the door was that I have a very close friend uh, who is a sculptor. Many of you who collect statues probably know the name Randy Bowen. Uh, he's a comic sculptor and he's kind of the, the father of the uh, statue, comic statue industry. And uh, he lives close by and, and we've been friends for many, many years. And over the, uh, the course of those years, he has gifted me many, many statues that he yeah. has sculpted. And I started to amass this collection of, uh, of statues. Uh, and then at the same time, I started to see the model builders out there who, you know, kind of the ex-ILMers, the people who were no longer in the industry, but were making models, uh, you know, huge display models for, for collectors like me. Yeah. And those were things that, you know, I didn't really think were possible when I was building models as a child. I mean, I wasn't lighting them, you know, there were no LEDs, I didn't do any of that. And so um, to see some incredible creations and some of the first pieces that I got uh, were from, uh, at the time, uh, Quantum Mechanics, 
Uh, there was a um, model builder named John Evelyn who started, uh, who was building um, artisan replicas, what they were calling them, of ships from Star Trek. And I just, it was one of those rabbit holes. You know, you see uh, something like that, a three foot long filming miniature. And it's just, it, it's breathtaking. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And after getting a few of those, I started to look at the master replicas pieces mm -hmm. uh, that were done, the Falcon, you know, the mm -hmm. uh, the X-Wing and TIE Fighter from EFX. Right. Uh, I mean, there's a whole list. Uh, it's, more, you know, more than we could discuss right now. Yeah. Uh, and slowly but surely after, you know, you get involved with statues and models mm -hmm. and you have a wide variety of interests you know, from whether it's comics or science fiction or pop culture, like Back to the Future, uh, which is another huge interest of mine. Um, and then soon you start to look at props yeah. and other pieces from, you know, the movies. And it's it's unbelievable the amount that's out there. Yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah as, as, I, I know as what you're saying. Best, look, look behind us, right? Yeah, I, I thank you. I thank you so much, Gabe. I mean, excuse me, Joseph, because when I, when, Joseph, when I first, Gabe introduced me to you, I, he was like, hey, I want you to meet this guy. And he's got this collection. Of course, he's into Star Wars, but he's into the Back to the Future and, and, he, and, and the Blade Runner and all this. I'm like, yeah, man, I'd love to meet the guy. And it's like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you're so humble, Joseph. And you're so cool. Gabe, I think it's time that, you know, uh, yeah. our viewers, we need to jump into the collection. Okay. Let's so, let's, but, let's do it. But before, yeah, let, let go ahead. Yeah, Joseph. I was going yeah. to say, before you do that, I really have to preface this with the caveat that, yeah. one, um, the, the room is still in construction. I'm of not course. done with it. Uh, two, I'm still unpacking everything. Which, <laughs> so you're going to see boxes everywhere. Half the place looks like the the warehouse from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot. There's a lot here. Only about a third of the collection. Is <laughs> and and the, the third thing is is that in doing this, in unpacking this collection, uh, which mo you know most of this has been in storage for many years. Right. Yeah. Um, my objective is let me get things out. Get them out of the boxes, get them on the shelves, um, get them on display, and then I can reorganize everything. So okay. you will see a lot in this room uh, that, in fact, none of it is where it will be when the room is finished. So um, everything's yeah. going to get reorganized. Things are kind of generally in place, but you're going to see some Marvel stuff mixed with Star Wars stuff. And the reason that is, is because once I can clear all the boxes from the center of the room, I'm actually assembling a large display um, for the center of the room, mm -hmm. like a, a display island uh, with multiple shelves and lighting. And that's for all of the studio ships, the studio scale and the large scale ships yeah. uh, from master replicas and EFX and from other model builders who have built and, things. And Joseph, yeah. So, and I think that, I think you're right. You're right. This is a great time to kind of show that because I think okay. it's very important for people to know kind of where the space is. but. So first, I want to kind of show um, some of the just the empty shelves, you know, as as they were when you first started, right? And then we'll go into the into that the video. But um, first, I want to kind of go through through the main, right? So walk us through here, right? So you have different types of shelves, right? You have just basics like. I mean, standard shelves like this, mm -hmm. but then you have some that are encased in glass, right? Correct. So when uh, we were building our house and I undertook designing the display room, the idea was to utilize all, almost all of the wall space, all of the periphery and put up shelving. And I wanted to do adjustable shelving. So the, the easiest and most efficient way was to use standards and brackets. So you can see... All of those are industrial, um, you know, commercial grade uh, steel standards and brackets, so they can hold quite a bit of weight. Yeah. Um, and some of them are freestanding like these. Mm -hmm. And the intention there was to make some shelves that were open that could house the collectibles that had acrylic covers. 
So, you yeah. know, like a lot of those mask replicas pieces, they have acrylic covers, uh, <laughs> the blasters and things like that. So I wasn't mm -hmm. worried about dust on those. So I figured I could put those on the open shelves. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the shelving that's encased in glass, that was done by the uh, the the guy who did all of the glass work for our house, all the shower doors, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So all of those are glass uh, panels. Each one is four feet wide by seven feet tall, quarter That's inch. That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you could kind of see with the with the Darth Maul bust here, you could kind of see right. the scale of it. And it's, it's right. so, it's so intense. So this, so this is in, this is huge, right? This yeah. wall right so here is. These are so these are all glass sliders, so they can mm -hmm. see they slide past each other, and you can get access to the shelves. And then around the room, there are shelves of varying depths. So I have shelves two feet deep, eighteen inches deep, fifteen mm -hmm. inches deep, twelve inches deep, and then the the picture that you just showed. Those are ultra deep shelves. Those are three feet deep. So and these ones, for, these ones are. These ones. Those, those are three feet yeah. deep. And okay. those are for the idea there was to put all of the Hot Toys vehicles that are rather okay. large, like the Batmobile and the, yes. the Hot Toys DeLorean and things like that. Yeah. Now, where you could, what you see yeah. here is these, there are access panels uh, at the bottom of the shelves, uh, mm -hmm. the bottom of the shelf stacks. And I have uh, power outlets in there, and those are all switched. So the idea was to wire all of the shelf lighting and then have the drivers for the LEDs plugged into those outlets, which I could then switch on with a light switch at the wall. Got it. Um, all of the lighting on the shelves, and this is something that will probably interest uh, the viewers who are contemplating doing something like this or lighting their shelves. I wanted to do lighting that that I could attach to the shelves, but still be able to adjust the shelves and not have to deal with all the wire management. Mm -hmm. So I had in my head this idea that, well, there's gotta be something like tracks or, you know, like track lighting, but for the wall and, you know, that you could wire an LED strip and then plug it into the track. And yeah. lo and behold, and I found this with almost everything when we were building our house, if you can think about it, if you can think of it, someone's already made this. Do it. So. So I found these from a company and uh, purchased all of the, the materials. And then I wired all of the, uh, the shelving with LED lights. The strips are in LED, in uh, diffuse, diffusion channels, mm -hmm. uh, aluminum channels, which act as heat sinks. And then mm -hmm. the lights diffused uh, with a cover. And then the wires go back to the, the power track at the back of the wall. And they just pop in, the, the plug just pops into the power track. So if you want, you can unplug the light, move the shelf up and down, and then replug it into the track, and it lights up again. And so it, it was really the perfect solution for me. And, and, uh, if, oh, and if anyone's curious, the color temperature of all the lighting is um, 4,000 Kelvin, which I thought was a good kind of natural wow. color. Uh, to best, you know, bring out, uh, it was a good temperature to bring out the natural colors of all of the, uh, all of the display items. So I'm just going to show kind of how it looks, um, you know, with, with all your side. Now this is obviously, <laughs> and this is just yeah. a sneak peek. I just want to give someone a, you know, everybody a sneak peek there, but let's, let's right. walk through, let's go through, through the room really quick. Cause you sent me a video that kind of walks through the whole the whole room and then we'll go into the specifics right after. Okay. So if you okay, want. So I can, yeah, I can kind of narrate. So as yeah. you walk into the room to the left, there's the kind of Star Wars section. I have a bunch of the uh, sideshow statues up there. Uh, those mm -hmm. are the Ralph McQuarrie uh, concept statues, some Darth Vader statues. Now those Marvel statues from sideshow, those are all getting moved and in there are going to be going one six scale dioramas uh, scenes from Star Wars. Then I have a helmet section. These are all Star Wars helmets. Um, I'm actually going to have to get rid of some of these because the cabinet is full and I still have all the Darth Vader helmets to go in there from A New Hope and Revenge of the Sith and the Melted Helmet and the Macquarie Vader Helmet. And then we have a uh, Han Solo and Carbonite there. Uh, and I'm actually now I have glass tables on either side there where there's going to be the Regal Robot Rancor and the Sideshow Jabba. Then I have a bunch of uh, blasters and um, 
and some uh, lightsabers, lightsaber hilts. And actually on either side of Han Solo, I'm putting up wall racks to put up all the Force FX lightsabers. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. and I saw... So, and everything has to be reorganized there because there are things in front of other things that are going to require acrylic risers, you know, just so they become visible. Yeah. And then we come to the, the ultra deep shelves here, and this is all kind of movie stuff. Uh, Back to the Future, uh, some of the Dark Knight trilogy stuff, uh, Batman vehicles. Uh, I'm actually getting a, a ZF-1, a mechanized ZF-1 from Fifth Element to go in there. Um, so they're going to have a lot of the big Hot Toys uh, vehicles, the DeLorean, the Bat, the Batmobiles. Yeah. Uh, then over here is going to be kind of old sci-fi. Hey, Star can I, Trek. I'm sorry, Joseph. Can I just... Okay, he's talking Back to the Future, and he's talking uh, Gabe DeLorean. Yeah, well, well, we'll get to that. We, get, oh, okay, we got okay. it categorized. Okay, j jump, jump back in, Joseph. You're good. Yeah. Bro. So then we have some uh, some of the old uh, Japanese stuff there. There was uh, Robotech, um, some Gundam stuff. Um, Very cool. I have some Transformers, Voltron, and then Japanese anime. And then in this section, where all those empty shelves you see behind the bus, that's all Hot Toys stuff. Those busts are getting moved to the opposite side of the room. There are going to be pedestals there. Those are life-size busts from Queen Studios. Uh, and then I have also a bunch of Marvel helmets, uh, comic helmets, and other random helmets. There's some Robotech, Battlestar Galactica, Ghost in the Shell. And all of that's going to get put around with the uh, comic... Uh, statue with the comic yeah. figures from hot toys and then here it's just a bunch of random movie props and statues that i was just trying to unpack and just throw yeah. on the shelves you know just to get rid of the boxes so those yeah. are all props those are some uh statues comic statues and then to the right there you can see those are all of the statues that randy bowen gave to me as gifts wow yeah that's, that's so going to be a little that's going to be a little dedication area to, to yeah. the art of Randy Bowen. Of course. And you just yeah. see all the force yeah, a effects. a lot of those effects. There. Wow. And then, and then <laughs> in the center of the room there, once it's empty, that's where all of the studio scale ships are going to be. God. And unfortunately, a lot of the statues that I have that are not going to be able to fit on the shelves are probably going to end up on, on that central display, like the Sideshow Voltron, um, some of the Prime One studio pieces that are really large. Um, so it's really, it's actually been a challenge to try and make the display space versatile enough and at the same time be able to accommodate all of these right. pieces of different sizes. And, and that's really hard to do because, you know, for every section you have, you know, in Star Wars, you have large pieces, you have small pieces. Uh, not everything kind of fits where right. you kind of expect. And so you have to make a lot of adjustments on, on the way. Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously just by looking at, at the room, it's, I mean, it's an impressive. It's <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in awe, man. I just, I can't. Thank yeah. You. I mean, that's, it's such a nice space. Um, and me and you were, were, were talking about kind of what, what, led you because obviously we all three of us have very different styles in 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 displaying our stuff right like i went with the dark kind of you know i don't know museum looking furniture michael obviously is going to with the death star theme what made you go with the whole white kind of white clean shelves so um so first of all i really like i love what michael did and I found it very inspiring. But because oh, my you. collection was more diverse than just Star Wars, I really couldn't do any type of a theme for the room. Of course. Uh, and then looking at other people's collections online and looking at how people have their things displayed, um, I like the, the the white, you know, the the clean look of white shelving and yeah. the fact that no, it, no. it reflects all of the light. Yeah. So it brightens everything up and it makes the pieces yeah. very visible it makes the and colors very visible out. Yeah. and it makes everything stand okay. out and that's kind of why i did it that way okay. got it um yeah. so joseph before we we jump into kind of specifics in your collection i want to uh, just put some some comments on here that okay. that we got we got uh our buddy from mce over here George. right and you're, you're good friends right 
you were very very good yeah. friends yeah he yeah. uh he is mm -hmm. like uh you know like you you know he has a channel i was wa i started mm -hmm. watching his channel um mm -hmm. absolutely loved it contacted him several you know yeah. several times for questions and things like that and then we became friends okay. and met at san diego comic con and we've been close nice. friends ever since actually we just went down to uh, to visit uh in florida about at the end of 2019 uh, we, my wife and i went down there and visited him and his wife that's awesome yeah all right so and then we got metamorphic customs up in here very cool and got dark night dark night archives nice yep got jeff in here in the house what's up hey jeff how are you buddy official buddy griffin love you michael ah uh, that's awesome <laughs> i love you too buddy i love you too stay strong bro got nick nico over here hey nicholas this guy's in mexico he's visiting his girlfriend in mexico what's up nick how you doing brother nice yeah and hey uh, also let's gave a shout out to yeah. pete uh, our new friend that's chimed in in the last week pete we appreciate and you're awesome man keep keep collecting yeah. and thank you for all the accolades everything that you've said you know you, as much as you say you, we're inspiring you're inspiring too pete thanks yeah. thank keep you. going keep doing yeah. it yes so. yeah sean sean in here thanks for thank joining you. us sean hey sean Paul, man, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Oh, yeah, man. and it's, we're just it's yeah, we're getting we got Lee Lee here in the house. Awesome. So hey. there you go, Very Yoda fan. Hey. There you go. Um, yeah. So as we're going through, you know, obviously his collection. If you guys mm -hmm. have any questions, just make sure you pop them on there, and Please. I'll kind of stop it, and we'll we'll ask the questions. Mm -hmm. So Are you again? Joseph, yes, where do you want to start? Because I uh, categorized well. your stuff. <laughs> I categorized your stuff because I had 120 pictures you sent me. Oh, geez. yeah. So, well, let's, start, viewers, with, let's just, start with Star Wars. Viewers, this That's might be I'm a five-hour show tonight. Might be five <laughs> wow. hours. So bear with us. This, <laughs> this is definitely a multi-segment. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna. So I you can it, start. It, start yeah, Star it Wars. is. It is definitely overwhelming. In fact until I started to pull things out of storage and unpack, you know, I, I had, I really didn't realize it was this much, you know, you collect over the years. And if you don't have a place to display anything, then you really don't know how much, you know, how much there is uh, and what kind of space it's going to take up. Come in, come in. Yeah. All right, Michael, you got, you got some, some visitors. I do. Uh, I apologize. I've got my, I Lovely okay. wife in here t telling me, hey, she's my little cheerleader on the side. Hi. Hi. Hey, yeah, Gabe and Joseph, say hello to the wife. Hi. <laughs> Hi back. So, but, uh, We actually got a, a quick little, little question here or comment from Jeff. Um, you know, yeah. So, and, and actually me and Joseph were talking about that today, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, kind of the, that, the, the way we, we decided to, to highlight the pieces. And yeah, I think we definitely have, it's a little bit different style, but I think mm -hmm. they just display so well. And I think just with the amount of things that, that Joseph has, uh, I mean, it would be impossible to do even something right. like that, just because obviously- I was, I was going to say, um, so the the comment about yours with the, you know, the dark backgrounds and the spotlight yeah. on the piece, is very very suited for how you have your display right you have a single piece in a showcase and in fact if you go like if you go to the um the chihuly museum in um, seattle next to the mm -hmm. museum of pop culture and mm -hmm. you go in there and you see some of those glass pieces they're sitting in a black display box with a single light pointed at yeah. the piece and the colors pop and they're very beautiful yeah. but if you're going yeah. to have a museum style display yeah. where you have multiple items right and you have maybe display plaques to you know to indicate what those items are right. then it would be very hard to display that on a black background absolutely all right so then we're going to start with star wars right joseph okay. and obviously <laughs> okay. we're, we're, we're big star wars fans so let's right. let's go let's go through these um Obviously, we have we have a lot to go through, so I might just kind of skip through, you know, yeah, just go through, shuffle through of them. But um, 
let's let's take a look at these first. Okay. So this first piece, what what is uh, this? So this is a piece by Martin Baer in Germany. This is uh, a custom uh, made lightsaber. Uh, mm -hmm. that he is known for his fantastic designs. Um, the company or his company is called MB Sabres. Uh, they're very uh, highly sought after. He does not uh, build commission pieces. He builds these, he told me, for himself. And when he's done with his creation, he puts it up for sale. So you have to be quick when you get the email. And I saw this. I would wanted one for years. I had the opportunity. I jumped at it. It is uh, all metal construction, 3D printed. Um, it is an amazing piece. It actually has a spinning plasma gate inside and uh, a kyber crystal that lights up. And then you yeah. can you can actually put that chassis into the Graflex yeah. hilt and then yeah. insert the blade. And it's an amazing piece. And that the display awesome. base is beautiful. It's I, I found it on Etsy. Uh, yeah from uh, Quest Designs Canada. And he yeah. does those bases. He does wall-mounted, uh, you know, bases, things like that. They're incredible pieces. And the display plaque is also from Quest Designs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a lot, a lot of people agreeing <laughs> that looks really cool. All right, so let's yeah. move on to where, and okay. so here we got some, some that I recognize here. Yeah, so that's reveal. the uh, Luke Skywalker um, Return of the Jedi reveal. Uh, lightsaber hilt from EFX, and then that uh, saber is from Saber Mock. In I think they're in Singapore. It's called Dark Storm. It's a beautiful piece, and they they have a display case for it. And all of these, well, the Saber Mock one is a, a NeoPixel, so it's installed, and you can you know nice. you can put that's sort so of you can do it. That's awesome. All right, so let's move to move on. Okay, to these, so these this helmets. was. Yeah, so this was early on. I was just unpacking helmets and, you know, I was so excited to get them all out of the boxes. So it's a mix of all kinds of stuff in there. Kind of random. Um, yeah, yeah, just random uh, pieces. I see some from Battlestar Galactica. I see 300 down there. Mega yeah. Man. Yes, I, yes. Yes, Mega the Man. The Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Geisha, uh, is in there. Um, that uh, 300 uh, mask was also a gift from Randy Bowen. Oh, wow. hey, hey, Joseph. So what, what do you use? I know. Uh, so on your stands, do you have a particular stand that you go with or is this the paper yes. towel? Holder, or what do you use? So, well, for the pieces that have bases or stands that come with them, I use those like the EFX and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and some of the other like tourist studios. But for like Anovos, they don't provide bases for their helmets yeah. because they're technically costume pieces. So yeah. I use paper towel holders. I found yeah. really nice, clean stainless steel paper tower, towel holders without any designs on them, and yeah. I use those. Uh, that's the same thing I do with with yeah. my Novos. Yeah, I thought I thought you did, Gabe. I wasn't quite sure though. That's yeah. good so, for, for the audience to know that that those paper. Do you, where do you get those, Gabe? Where where do you? I, I have a video. I have a video on on my YouTube channel about the displays, and I actually put the link there. It, it, I get them from Amazon. They're about ten to fifteen dollars, depending on you know when you get them. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they're basic stainless steel paper towel holders. Yeah, they're beautiful. So this is also early on. You know, I just started putting things on the shelves. I got a pedestal and I put that Darth Maul bust on display. But actually, that's when you get removed, and I'm putting another display case in there for all of the Star Wars Hot Toys figures that I have. I realized I, I didn't account for those and I have no place for them. So another display case is going there and the Darth Maul mm -hmm. bust is getting moved. And now there are, um, you can see there's a lot more pieces that I have, uh, you know, blasters yeah, I, I and things think we have over here. Yeah. And uh, those actually, the two sabers you see that are upright. Yeah. Uh, the Kylo Ren and the, what what is the Ray? Saber, those are the ones from Prop Shop. The prop Shop. <laughs> and yeah. you, have, and Gabe, you, have, you have quite a bit of a Prop Shop collection, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Gabe, you're drooling, Gabe. You're I, drooling. Have, <laughs> I, I, have, I have that one. <laughs> yeah. I have the Kylo Ren one. I don't have Ray. Yeah. So I um yeah, I have the 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 two sabers. Oh, yeah. I have Ray's staff, which I don't have on display yet. 
um, and I have uh, Vader's melted helmet, uh, and then I had Chewbacca's bowcaster. And we and we have, and we might we might show all of the reference pictures that you took because it, it's a rare okay. item. It's there's not too many out there, and in fact, I've actually never seen detailed photos like the ones you have. So we yeah. might that we might save that for the end, but okay. the, the, mic that, the mic that he, that he ha had. I know. <laughs> I know. That's in the past. We there's know what's happened present. to it. But, oh, uh, man. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit. Man, that's that's a, that's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> so those are uh, Darth the uh, uh, Death Star uh, tiles from EFX, um, a Medal of Yavin from Master Replicas, and then there are the two um, thermal detonators, the 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 clean mm -hmm. and the weathered. Yeah. That are yeah, there. Yeah, beautiful. Cool. All right, let's keep on going here. So what do these we got are, here? These are uh, just a couple of pieces. Uh, the black lightsaber there is from mm. Saber Forge. The one next to it is actually a pewter uh, replica that was done by Royal, uh, what is it, Royal Sengal. Mm. And uh, and then the one next to that is, uh, is one that I made with my buddy George when we went to... Uh, galaxy's edge and then there are a couple of other pieces there those are the uh rebel rings those were done uh, one of them is uh, is a licensed one and one is a fan-made one that you can see there that's much smaller mm -hmm. and then the uh dice han solo's dice yeah so the larger one is the licensed piece the smaller one is the fan-made piece. Both of them have functioning irises, which is pretty amazing. Now, are those the same ones that they sell like at the Disney parks? I know they, they sold one of those, right? At yeah, the, the bigger one is probably the Disney parks one. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right, now let's move on to a couple helmets you got. Oops, my bad. <laughs> yeah, so these are, these Beautiful. Are, like I said, as I was unpacking, you know, the central one is EFX. And then the two flanking ones are from Master Replicas. That Shadow Trooper is from Master Replicas, which is uh, it's quite rare, I think, uh, because yeah. that's the fiberglass one. And yeah. then the Boba Fett helmet is also, that's a signature edition from Master Replicas. And then we got a little evolution going. Yeah, so um, wow. yeah, all of, it's funny how, because those are all kind of from random companies, right? The first one on the, the, the original clone troopers from EFX. Right. The two central ones are master replicas, which preceded, you know, predate the the EFX one. And then the one on the right is the first order stormtrooper yeah. helmet. That's the premier line from Minovos. Yeah. And Joseph, can you give us a little tell us that little story about about the <laughs> EFX? I know you you, you yeah. mentioned it last time we had you on here, yeah. but so I think it's yeah, so it's a, a, it's a great break. lesson to be learned. I yeah. Think. yeah. So Morning to sure. all you collectors out there who purchase something, uh, but don't open it immediately. So I purchased that piece, uh, but unfortunately, because I had no display space at the time, I mean, I was living in a condo. Um, I really, I just kept it sealed because I didn't know if I would have a place to display all of these pieces. And I said, you know, if I keep it sealed in the box, it'll be worth more if I have to turn around and sell it. So I never opened it. When I finally opened it, I found the helmet and that's it. There was no display base. There was no plaque. There was no paperwork. None of the other things were in the box and it was brand new and factory sealed, which means it was a quality control issue from EFX. I contacted Brian Ono. I said, look, you know, do you at least have a stand or something? And he's, he was like, no, those are long gone and I don't have any plaques or bases or anything like that for it. And thankfully, Gabe, you have that same piece and mm -hmm. you were able to, you know, take a picture, scan the, the plaque. And I was right. able to have one made by a plaque maker. And then I got a Master Replicas uh, base uh, from another person on eBay and I put them together. Yeah, no, I think it came out, came out great. You can't even tell. No, not at all. Yeah, yeah the, the plaque maker did a uh, great job. Now wow. here are a lot of the blasters from Master Replicas. So yeah. I, I have all the pieces there, but like I said, because I was just trying to get things on the shelves, you can see how everything's overlapping. 
there are right. pieces in front of other pieces. And so in the end, I'm going to get acrylic risers and kind of offset those so you can see everything. But those right. are the Han Solo blaster, the weathered and the elite version, a Luke mm -hmm. Skywalker blaster, um, Leia's uh, blaster. And then toward the back of the image there, there's a Rebel Trooper and a um, Storm Trooper blaster. That's beautiful. It's That's beautiful. Crazy. All Thank right, you. so let's let's go on. You got more helmets here, a little. Yeah, bit so this is as I started to, you know, unpack some more. Um, again, those are more Anovos uh, helmets. The Chrome ones are the 40th anniversary EFX helmets. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the Mandalorian helmet there is from Anovos, which I actually like it. Um, the one that I got was really, you know, a lot of people had issues, right? Some people received ones that had fingerprints in the in the clear coat. Um, some people were not happy. The one that I got was really nice and it's on display, but I am probably going to replace it with the EFX one, which I think is more accurate. I have that. It's still in the box, but I did open it to make sure that everything was there. Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah. All so, right. So we got, we got some more here. More, yeah. More helmets. The bottom ones are from EFX and Anovos. Those, uh, the Luke and the mm -hmm. Wedge helmets are the yeah. EFX ones. Nice. We got some more blasters here. Yeah, Django Fett and Boba Fett, and the Boba Fett blaster is a um, signature edition. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Now I I do uh, not to yeah. not to advertise, but I do have a non signature edition version. If anyone is interested, and there you go. <laughs> there selling. you go. Let us know if you guys are interested, and we'll we'll get you in touch with them. Uh, hey, so let, let me just ask Joseph, where is the Ralph McQuarrie Vader? helmet bro <laughs> yeah so, now let's talk know, about I want that thing so bad <laughs> yeah i know it's it's still it's still in the box i did open it and it is it is in uh great Good. condition yeah uh, it's good. actually because a lot of those believe it or not had flaws you know people opened them and they had cracks and they had yeah yeah you know all kinds of marks but i was fortunate i got one that was um that was in perfect condition so mm -hmm. i'm really thrilled and it will be getting a place of prominence in, in those shelves along with the Vader. And then yeah. I don't think you have pictures of it. I'll show you guys a little later if you're interested. Uh, but I also have two Stormtrooper helmets that are Macquarie concept pieces. In fact, in that picture that you have mm -hmm. up right now, you can see it all the way in the very corner of the image um, on the right-hand side there. That's one of them. And mm -hmm. those are two helmets that were done by... Um, armory shop props in moscow mm -hmm. now yeah. joseph you and you have multi obviously there's still a lot of helmets that you haven't you there haven't are. displayed right you said you have all the vader helmets you have probably about four or five I, vader helmets yeah I'm, I'm trying to decide what to do because i have the efx a new hope one which is beautiful that's the fiberglass one yeah. that's directly that has the lineage right it was taken directly from the original piece Mm -hmm. um, and then there is the Revenge of the Sith one that was made by Master Replicas, which is very different, right? Mm -hmm. Because that one was 3D modeled for the film and it's very symmetric and it looks very different, right? Hey, Haley. Hi. 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 So Hi. just like. Hey, say, say, say goodnight, baby. Good night, guys. Good night. I love, I love you, babe. Love you, okay, baby. So just Sorry, like, guys. Sorry, guys. Okay. So just like. And this is very interesting. So, I mean, just a little aside, right? Yeah. Regarding sculpting and and the way these things look. So, human faces are not symmetric, right? And right. and you know that when you take you've seen where they take a picture of someone and take half of their face and right. and and mirror it, the person looks completely different. Right. Well, the Vader helmet, the original one for A New Hope, was a hand sculpted piece, and it's asymmetric. And it has a very specific look to it. And so when they made the Vader helmet for Revenge of the Sith and they digitally modeled it and it's all symmetric, it looks very, very different. No. And then uh, and then there's the Anovos Darth Vader helmet, no. which I, I'm not sure I'm going to be having on display. I'm no. because it's you know a third yeah. Vader helmet. And then there's the reveal helmet from Black Series. The Black Series. And then there's yeah. the melted helmet. From prop shop, prop so shop. I got to figure out where the, all those are going. Yeah, and we'll we'll eventually we'll eventually get get to that once you know, couple yeah. 
few episodes down once you you start getting into that. But let's let's go through it because we have still so we're oh, barely okay. touching on Sorry. Star Wars. We're gonna have to like skip through a bunch. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so this is uh, the Jazz this is a Inc. six scale diorama from Jazz Inc. Absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful piece. Um, it's for the Hot Toys figures, but it's fully lit. Um, mm -hmm. Has a speaker in the base. It plays. It, there's a remote control. Plays clips. Uh, I think I sent you the video, which I, I, you I, I do. I would have to. I'd have to look for it right now. But okay. Well, well, well and, and, and the picture is that there's a canopy, and it, you know the whole thing is covered, and it's absolutely. Yeah. So there's another piece that goes over the top of it. Right, that. it's on top, and, and yeah. I think I have it. I have it ready to go somewhere in here, and okay. I'll get. I'll get to so, it. So here. then on either side of Han Solo and Carbonite behind me, I decided mm -hmm. to put these glass console tables for mm -hmm. all the other pieces. So I have the one six scale Jabba from Sideshow there. Uh, mm -hmm. The Regal Robot Rancor is going to be going on the opposite side mm -hmm. when I get yeah. it in a couple of days. Uh, and then just some random stuff. I'm just throwing whatever I can on there right now, <laughs> you know, just so it's not sitting on the floor. Yeah. That's the Sideshow. Uh, Grogu, Baby Grogu, which is a beautiful piece, and thanks again, Gabe, uh, on behalf of all the collectors out there for discovering that you could modify those cheeks, yeah, uh, yeah. To get rid of some of the rosiness. I know that's that was the biggest complaint on there. Now, you got a, a couple of interesting pieces I want to dang, I, I love that, yeah. So, that is uh, Jin Urso's gun from Rogue One, mm -hmm. and that was done by War Machine Paintball. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. It's extremely yeah. heavy. It's all metal. Yeah. That's and, uh, and beautifully assembled bad. and weathered. And then there's, um, uh, that's the Mando Blaster. That's also from them. Uh, and then um, right now I'm actually working with someone to assemble a Ray Blaster from Force Awakens. I have a mm -hmm. kit for that. And so I'm, I'm building that up nice. right now. And then we, we kind of got a sneak peek last time you were coming here. <laughs> Yeah, that is the uh, the sand crawler that I just got and finished. Um, it got damaged during shipping, but I was able to finish up all the repairs on it. It's an absolutely beautiful piece. And um, Michael, oh. thank you for introducing me to Chris from last week's show. Of course. Of course. Uh, I was able to talk to him. He's working on one of these right now and painting yep. it. And so I was able to nice. send him a few reference photos. So. And yeah, that's what it's yeah. all about. That that's yeah. great. That you guys right. are able to connect with yeah. that. That's awesome. And yeah. for for all for all you uh, viewers that are are chiming in that just saw the sand crawler, if you're looking at that and you're wondering, that is a Randy Cooper sand crawler, and that was built by a gentleman uh, by the first name of. I'm just going to say it because you know Mike Salzo uh, did the paint. Uh, if you're okay, Joseph, uh, yeah, set up. I, my, I, yeah. he, he built that for himself um, several years yep. ago when I managed yep. to purchase that from him. Yeah, so. and, and I, I just want to throw out that Joseph, he he called me all stressed out about a week ago when this thing showed up, and it was broken a lot of little pieces. And, and I'll yep. tell you what, you know, Joseph, you would you'd yeah. never know that what that you repaired this thing. I mean, well, it, oh. it looks straight out of the movie, brother. You did a Thank well, you. I job. think. I think with that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to show this really quick, but I want to show yeah. something else yep. that's really cool. So, what is this? But really quickly. So this is um, a super star destroyer built by yep. Daniel Beck in Germany. Yep. And this is so, so this is another thank you to modeler magic, by the way, because this is how I found out about Daniel Beck, who's an incredible yep. artist uh, yep. in Germany. Uh, I got in touch with him. He's made me many, many star Wars pieces. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic guy. My wife and I went uh, to Germany in 2016 for Oktoberfest, and we ended up, you know, meeting him and spending some time with him and his family. And anyway, he he made this for me. It is a 38 inch long Super Star Destroyer wow. with a fantastic Death Star base, and the flanking uh, flanking Star Destroyers are in scale and also lit. Um, this is going to be one of the pieces in the center of the room with all the other studio scale and large That's scale crazy. models. Yeah, he crazy. also built he also built a Star Destroyer for me out of the uh, Anagrand kit, which is also fantastic. And he did small 3D printed uh, Tantive Four, you know, blockade runner yeah. that's that's suspended from the 
docking bay underneath. That's so That's cool. cool. Yeah. So Joseph, but, um, so going yeah. back to to the to the modeling thing, mm -hmm. so you are yeah. also have another little a workshop in your in your space where you're Correct. able to work on some of this stuff, right? And I just wanted mm -hmm. to yeah. show the audience that you don't you don't mess around. It is yeah. <laughs> so so well, one of the things when when we were building our home, um, my wife you know said look we've been living in a condo you've been living in condos your whole life uh you love to build models um you should create a workspace for yourself that you can build in and in fact you're building the downstairs she's like just take the downstairs and make it your own and do whatever you want no. so i built the display room and then adjacent to the display room you, you see so you leave the display room then there's a big rec room with a kind of a theater and then and then off of that there's another room where i have my workshop uh, and a storage room and and that's where i can build i have a you know um i i really built it out with all the amenities right a spray booth a ventilation system mm -hmm. uh floor you know vacuum system and and uh sink and so it's really it's really nice it, i yeah, love working awesome. in it yeah it's a great, um, Joseph, great i space. found that i found that video of um of the falcon oh Oops. yeah now you can see it with the canopy i'm sorry that's just badass that is so <laughs> sick. And that's one six, right? One six scale. It's one six scale. So to give you an idea, that's a dinner table that it's sitting yeah. on. Yeah. Right? And, and for, then, those, for those people that don't know <laughs> that Jazz Inc., who Jazz Inc. is, mm -hmm. tell them, Joseph, they specialize yeah. in one six scale. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So Jazz Inc. creates one six scale dioramas for the hot toys figures and in fact one of the images that you showed where i had eight cubicles those are actually um, from ikea and they're built to fit his uh diorama environments for the uh hot toys figures but he also does vehicles that are meant to also be the di diorama displays for you know for your figures but the vehicles are like hot toys vehicles right they they function they're lit you know yeah. for the vehicles the cars the wheels move and turn yeah. and, and they're incredible pieces now he's committed himself to only making things that that the companies the big companies like hot toys teased yeah. but did mm -hmm. not pr produce for the collectors there you go and so that's he's providing an incredible service um wow. you know to the to the community out there so Joseph, I think we're gonna okay. So we're gonna wrap up Star Wars there. So we're gonna okay. move on to your to your next ones because we got <laughs> we gotta get through a lot still. Okay, so yeah. let's let's go to Back to the Future. I'm gonna okay. share some Back to the Future stuff because this is my I I, I love Back to the Future. Besides Star Wars, it's probably my I, second. I, 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 I have to agree with you. I, I love that too, Gabe. Yeah, man, I love so it. So okay. this is so this is part of the Back to the Future display that I have. And um, like I said, unfortunately. You know, there's a lot of stuff in the back that you can't see because I have to put acrylic risers and things like that to get everything to right. display. Um, but you have, you know, the I know you have some of these pieces, Gabe, right. like the flux capacitor and the Mr. Fusion mm -hmm. and the Mattel hoverboard. The hoverboard. Um, mm -hmm. the uh, some of the other pieces are custom, like the plutonium chamber. Um, no. that Pepsi, uh, the the Pepsi Perfect was the run that Pepsi did back in 2015. Mm -hmm. um and then i also have a hot toys delorean that's going to go in there with the hot toys figures that they did of marty mcfly and doc brown now let's let's just cut to the chase because <laughs> you have a freaking delorean I mean... <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so i'm a huge back to the future fan right but ever since i was a child i loved the delorean before even before the movie came out i loved the car i just thought it was it just it was 
well, remember the scene in Back to the Future where he crashes into the barn and then the kid yeah. pulls out the, the comic and you see this thing and it looks like a spacecraft. Yeah. That's what I loved about the design of the DeLorean. It looks like a, a you know, a space age car. And when I was a kid, I was totally enthralled. Yeah. And obviously at the time I couldn't have one. And growing up, I couldn't get one. But once I finally got to the point in my life where I had some disposable income, I thought to myself, you know, I've always wanted one of these things. And and why should I not try and get one? It's clean. And, uh, so here's here's my question, Joseph, because uh -huh. me and you have had this conversation multiple times because you know I'm I'm in the market for one of these. Right. Now yeah. buy, but you keep on convincing me not to buy one. You keep yeah. on kind of scaring me out of it. Well, it's not I'm I i do not want to scare you, but the, the thing is <laughs> is that it is a car that's over 40 years old. Yeah. And if you're going to get one, just be aware that it's it's constant attention and constant work. And a car like that is not th something that you can let sit. So you have to use it. You have to drive it. I try and drive mine as much as I can, but yeah. it can be hard sometimes. I don't like to drive it in the rain and living in the Northwest. That's hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, but th that's the thing. It's an it's an old car with an internal combustion engine. So you you know, unless you have the time to devote to working on it, I'm fortunate there is a, a place here because there are actually a lot of people in the Northwest with that drive DeLoreans. And mm. I found a, a, a service, a place that provides service for DeLoreans here. So, wow. so I can take it to get work done on it. Um, yeah. But, you know, I want, I want to tell you a little story about that. I said, you know, that I always wanted one and I, mm -hmm. and I finally decided to get it what really inspired me was my father. So my dad uh, is from that generation where, you know, you, you don't get the things that you want, right? It's all about sacrifice, right? He's yeah. a depression era, um, you know, from that generation. And my dad loves the Austin Healey, which is an old English sports car. I love that car. Yeah. And my dad, you know, it's one of those things. He he loves it. He has a photo of it. He used to carry around in his briefcase, but he would never buy one. And he mm -hmm. would always quote Spock from Star Trek from the original yeah. series to me. You know, having or uh, wanting is far more a desirable thing than having. You know, it may not be logical, but it's often true. And. I told myself, I am not going to walk around with a picture of a DeLorean in my briefcase my entire <laughs> life. If I want this car, I'm going to get it. And when I'm yeah. tired of it, I will sell it. And yeah. that's exactly uh, what I did. But I still have the car and I love it. I Does love it have it. a capacitor on it? No, no, it's actually all original. I got <laughs> it. It, it yeah. is, uh, it is a, it's in mint cool. condition. It only has 12,000 miles on it. Wow. It, is, wow. it is a phenomenal car. It was a phenomenal yeah. find. Yeah, we we've talked about it, and I, I've I've discussed that if I do end up buying one of the DeLoreans, and actually in Texas, there's the, you know they have the the, yep. the factory with the parts, yeah, with all the parts and all that. Anyways, I, if I find one, I want to beat up one, like not necessarily in good condition, but I actually want to convert it into the Back to the Future uh -huh. to um, yeah. DeLorean with like the whole the back part, the Mister Fusion, and all that. Yeah. So okay. yes, all right, I'm gonna okay. we're gonna skip ahead a little okay. bit, so. Okay. Let's jump into the next category, which is the comics, because I think you have some some very cool stuff that I'm sure everyone wants to see. So we'll start with this this kind of bigger wall. Yeah. So, so this is, like I said, a lot of the pieces that I have, uh, comic statues, were gifted mm -hmm. to me by Randy Bowen. And you can see all of those, all of the first bank there on the right-hand side of the image. Those are all his pieces. And in fact, I have to go back and reorganize because you can see his Sentinel down there. It was too tall to fit in the space that I had. So I have to remove all the shelves and, and adjust the heights to accommodate some of those pieces. But he's a fantastic, fantastic sculptor uh, and a great friend and absolutely, you know, treasure um, everything that, you know, not just the pieces, you know, the work that he's done, the things that I received as gifts from him, but I actually have been able to spend some time with him uh, to learn sculpting techniques. He's taught me how to sculpt a little bit, nice. and it's just fantastic. Now, are these 
these are also his, right? Is that no, these no. are not. So this is a custom piece uh, that was done um, that I managed to pick up uh, on the secondary market because I missed out on the run. I didn't know about mm. it. These custom pieces tend to be pretty limited. Uh, the runs are kind of secretive because they're not licensed. Mm. And so, you know, it, I didn't know about it until afterward. This is actually from Sideshow Collectibles. That's the Iron oh, Man nice. Mark Seven. That's a beautiful piece too. Uh, all lit up. It's it's a beautiful display. This is a um, Spider Man also from Sideshow. The unique mm -hmm. part of uh, the unique thing about this piece is that it is completely fabric covered. Yeah. But the fabric has been sculpted and painted to completely hug the body. I mean, it's just incredible. I love that. Hey, if, if, if I don't mind, if I can break in real quick. Yeah. So so Gabe, I uh, talking to Joseph here, Joseph. Yeah you have been patiently waiting to create this beautiful gallery that you are putting together right now. And you're still, you're, I don't know, maybe 40% through of unboxing and whatnot. What are your, what is your collection goals? Where, 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 are you, where do you stand right now in the collection world, whether it's the star Wars or, or the Marvel or the back to the future, where, where, where are you at right now in your collection? Uh, do you mean, do I plan to collect more? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what are your goals? So where, where, where do you, cause right now I think where it stands, um, once you unbox the rest of your boxes, you're going to have to double your square footage. Is that correct? I, I, I yeah, <laughs> well, that, that remains to be seen. I'm certainly going through and, and trying to determine what means the most to me. And certainly as I unpack things, I see, you know, I say, well, you know, this, this actually doesn't fit. This doesn't look as it, like some of the Mega Man stuff that I have, you know, the Mega Man blaster. Mm -hmm. And those, mm -hmm. th those are large pieces that, you know, are not that important to me. Yeah. Though I may be getting rid of certain things to accommodate or at least to make the display look better. I, I do have, I do have a couple of, you know, grail, like, I guess you'd call them grail pieces that mm -hmm. I want to add to the collection. Um, you know, those are the, the absolute must haves that I, I want to get done. One of those mm -hmm. I just told you about was the ZF one from fifth element. And yeah. I found a gentleman who, who has done some amazing mechanical engineering, getting mm -hmm. that piece to deploy and, yeah. um, in, in a mechanized fashion. We got, um, we got a I, couple of pictures of, of, Fifth Element stuff. We'll we'll yeah. get to it too. I'm and I'm trying to work with him to 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 create that because you know it's obviously complicated. Um, mm -hmm. You inspired me, Gabe, with that uh, Boba Fett jetpack, and I'm actually working with the same artist you worked with mm -hmm. to create a couple of those jetpacks. Wow. Um, I'm you know I still uh, I'm still there are still some large scale ships and things like that and mm -hmm. uh, display pieces that I want to get made. And I've already accounted for that space wise, but once uh, I get to all of that, uh, I think, I think I'm going to have to slow way down on my acquisitions. Yeah. Well, Dark Knight Archive says, you know, collecting is forever until you run out of room and make plans for expansion. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> yeah, where true. you're eventually gonna gonna end up there, Joseph. Well, well I said Dark Knight. Made, so actually, um, I actually made some some decisions, uh, I guess, changes to my plan, which is. For some of the pieces that are more movie related, like I have a life size um, uh, ET, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and a, a large Groot, uh, and um, I have a couple of other busts that are movie related. I'm actually getting that um, the Bruce Lee bust from Infinity Studios yeah. that's coming out. So most, I think, those pieces are going to end up in my movie room. Uh, you know, so when you sit and you watch a movie, like I know Michael has that in his uh, theater room. You can be surrounded by some things that are, you know, representative of all of the, the wonderful stories and, and movies yeah. that we've grown to love. Well, um, these are, um, these are well, some more comic helmets. Yeah, Joseph, that's what I was going to ask you. So who, yeah. who makes these? Because I know EFX made a couple of them, right? But these are not the EFX, right? No. So, okay. So the three on the top were all made by Taurus Studios. Okay. Those are the Taurus. And those are the Taurus ones. The one on the bottom, the Ant-Man on the bottom left, which is the original Ant-Man, is made by King Arts. And that one is pretty incredible because it actually has fans and stuff inside. So when you look through the openings, they're, you know, spinning fans and, you know, everything's lit up. 
Yeah. The one in the center is the new Ant-Man helmet, which is just the Black Series helmet. But okay. it, it displays very well. And then those are some metal claws. That is another large-scale ship that I have. Um, mm -hmm. That was done by John Eblen um, when he was with QMX. Uh, and that is um, the Milano from Guardians of the Galaxy. That's badass. That is a absolutely beautiful piece. It's got a 28-inch wingspan. It's fully lit. Uh, if you zoom in on one of the other pictures from the, you know, from the three, you can see the cockpit is all, you know, built out. And here's another thing for those of you who are not familiar with studio models. Um, a lot of the time when they build a studio miniature, they will not put the glass over the cockpit, the canopy glass, right? Because mm -hmm. it just reflects light and it causes problems with filming. So a lot That's of right. studio models have no you know, no canopy glass, they're just open. And in fact, you'll see like that, uh, the one six scale Millennium Falcon cockpit, you can actually take apart the canopy and remove the glass panes. So it's open, so you can see the Hot Toys figures inside. Nice. Yeah, so this is a beautiful, uh, the Milano is a beautiful piece done by uh, John Evelyn, so. Yeah, no, it's, and I remember seeing it, at, I think at Comic-Con yeah. a couple years back. Yeah, I, I think only four of them ended up getting made, so they're wow. they're quite rare. All right, let's let's keep this is yeah, this is some animated, animated Batman uh nice. stuff. I'm not sure I'm gonna have room in that cabinet after I add all of the other hot toys vehicles. So those may end up getting mounted on the walls because nice. they're um so light, right? They're they're plastic. Now these that, are life size replicas, right? Yeah, those are all. Those were all custom. So cool. the The spear gun that's there was done by Steve Dimso, who you all know as the guy from who created the Diagostini Millennium Falcon and who was involved yep. in Astro Replicas, and that's all metal. And then yep. the other one, which is the Gauntlet, which is you know the one that he uses to zip line out of the museum in yeah. the you know the original in the eighty nine one, right? Yeah, in the eighty nine back man movie that is also an all metal piece uh and that was done by uh, an artist in the czech republic and wow. it's just fantastic i think those are, there are only three of them that he made and that's those one. are so cool now we we all recognize right. these right yeah so, so now these are the hot toys vehicles and mm -hmm. i absolutely love the work that hot toys does on their vehicles and mm -hmm. it, this is just fantastic. So I I actually have picked up all the vehicles that they've made I, because they're just so stunning. Yeah. Yeah, so I have those. And then I also have the the bat, you know, the motorcycle and the bat, which is the flying one that was done. And in you have the Club. DeLorean too, right? You have the DeLorean. I have the DeLorean that will go with the Back to the Future stuff. And, yeah. and I have the 89 Batmobile too, but I don't have yeah. that unpacked yet. You guys, excuse me real quick. Be right back. No, you you go okay. for it. Stand by one second. Okay. So that's a Rick Baker life-size Joker bust. That was from side that came from Sideshow. I believe nice. it was done under DC, you know, the label mm -hmm. of DC collectibles. It's a beautiful piece. This is from Queen Studios. Wow. Uh, that is cute. a life-size Iron Man Mark 50. Yeah. And this is the next one, I believe, is the Thanos bust that they did. Jeez. Now lifelike. It is it is incredible. Now this is a new kind of um uh, I, I think a new uh avenue in collecting, which is uh where they're using silicon to generate these incredibly lifelike um uh, portraits, <laughs> right? So yeah. this is silicon. Now you you can see it you can see it they used it in this one. Uh I'm getting the Alita bust that Queen Studios is also making. That's also silicon. And um <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> yeah. um, secretly Bruce Wayne, man. Yeah, I mean that yeah. that literally is a bat cave with the whole yeah. door. It's I love it. And then um, you know, J and D Studios is now making um, you know, quarter scale statues, third scale mm -hmm. statues out of with the silicon portraits. Yeah. And it's incredible. They're beautiful, they're lifelike. They're I am just a little concerned um about the right. longevity, right? Right. That's gonna because start cracking. Know, yeah, and they say it's medical grade, but you know, look, I'm I'm in the medical field, and there's nothing that lasts forever. Even the titanium joint replacements, you know, wear out. Yeah. So 
Um, so it has me a little worried, but the room is temperature and humidity controlled. So yeah. hopefully that will help. This is yeah. a Iron Spider yeah. bust also from Queen Studios. And man, Queen Studios is just knocking it out of the park. Yeah. Man. These are this awesome. piece is very interesting. So I didn't collect life size busts. Yeah. Um until this came out. This was the the one of the first pieces that Queen Studios did. Yeah. And it's really funny because I was like, well, this is really big, and I'm not sure I should collect life size busts. Uh, the only life size piece I had at that point was the Han Solo and Carbonite. Mm -hmm. But my wife saw this and was like, you have to get this. It is it's absolutely so cool. fantastic. And she was right. So I bought it. And after that, it was the it was definitely a, a rabbit hole, right? Yeah. I, now you can see all of the life-size busts that I have. Yeah, no, Metam Metamorphic Customs agrees 100%. I think we all do. And I remember, you know where I first saw him, actually? I don't know if Lee is still on here, but I remember Lee has a couple of these pieces. I remember mm -hmm. seeing them on his Instagram. And I was just like, man, that, those just look insane. Um, so, I mean, just to give people a kind of a just perspective uh, as far as the size goes, I mean, these things are huge. I mean, they're life size, obviously. Yeah. So I'm actually, I, I was really just, like I said, I'm trying to get rid of boxes. So I just put some yeah. styrofoam, you know, from sideshow statues and put the busts on top of them just so they wouldn't be sitting on the floor, yeah. but they are, they're large pieces and displaying them can be a challenge. Yeah, uh, but actually, you, you the do, next they are going to fit in the shelves, though, right? You have they're not going in the shelves. They're going. Okay. There's a section in the room where I have a bare wall, and along that wall, I'm putting pedestals that are hollow. the The busts are going to sit on top, and then inside the hollow is going to go things that represent uh, that character, right? So yeah. for th uh, for Thanos, for example, I have mm -hmm. the Hot Toys. Thanos, the gauntlet that's going to go inside under Thanos. Mm -hmm. um, I have the same for Iron Man, right? I have his gauntlet. And the one on the floor that you see there is the Taurus Studio. One. That's, I, I'm looking for Beautiful. that one now. After <laughs> seeing that, yeah. that's just so, because I have the Hot Toys one, but that one's just so plasticky and cheapy. Yeah. Like it just feels like a toy. But yeah. that thing is so bad. And I have the Taurus, um, the damaged one. The, the damaged one. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have, you should see, you'll see that in the cabinet there. But if you, if I have a picture there uh, with it. But anyway, uh, and then along that, uh, oh, this is another, this is a piece from Prime One. That's the Hush That's Superman. Cool it is yeah. absolutely beautiful. It is very big. <laughs> it is 42 inches tall. Um, but the, the beauty of it is that cape. It's a big satin cape with thick wires along the periphery, which allow you to pose it. it took me about two hours to pose that cape, but I'm very proud of it. <laughs> wow, and it came out so good, man. Yeah, thanks. that's um, crazy so that you pose that. It doesn't. It looks like yeah. it's like like uh, plaster. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, Harley Quinn from Prime One, also the Margot Robbie uh, version. And then you and, can change the heads. Is that where? Yeah, those are all extra heads. I didn't. I don't have anywhere to put them, so I just put them on the base there until I have it. But again, it's just sitting on the floor until I yeah. decide where to put it. That's uh, the 2099 Spider Man, also from Prime One. Now, yeah. yeah. Now along the the blank wall that I have, um, mm -hmm. the, where all those busts are going to go above that. Mm -hmm. are going to go all of the wall hung. I have a lot of um, things like a Captain America shield, Wonder Woman's shield, a lot of mm -hmm. swords, uh, Green Destiny sword from Crouching Tiger, Uma Thurman's uh, Hitori Hanzo sword from Kill Bill, oh, uh, wow. a lot of the weapons from uh, District 9, the uh, Weta Workshop full-size District That's 9, so cool. Pools, yeah. which are incredible. So I'm, going, I'm planning to mount all those on the wall. Uh, along with a couple more jetpacks, um, the Rocketeer jetpack, uh, yeah, Ghostbusters we're... proton pack, those things. So that, that's just awesome. Here we're gonna we're gonna get through. We're gonna get through all of them, guys. So <laughs> don't worry. We're, we're gonna go over the hour today for sure. But we're gonna get through it because yeah. there's just cool things we got. So these, gotta... this is uh, you know Corbin Dallas's blaster yeah. from Fifth Element and some of the Fifth Element stones um, that were done by Golden Armor. Uh, and then I'm really, really looking forward to that ZF one. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully no, it'll, I, it'll happen. I, you know, I, some of the the stuff, the details you're sharing with me is just insane. But look, Lee Lee's asking when are, when are you getting an invite to the to the <laughs> opening 
<laughs> well, no, that thing is. I, let me tell you, um, this is what you see now has taken me two years, mm -hmm. and and it's only a third. I'm only a third of the way through. Oh, so, <laughs> so, and now we have a, a brand new uh, newborn, a three month Maybe. old. Congratulations! Yeah, thank you. And that's taking <laughs> now. Every time I come down here to do any work, my I hear my wife say. <laughs> Can you come up here and hold her for a second? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so these are from Hollywood Collectibles Group. Those right. are life-size prop replicas uh, from Ghostbusters. And actually, those are going to get moved a uh, little to the side. And I have the mm -hmm. one six scale Ecto one from Blitzway yeah. that's going to go in there. Oh, yeah. Along with the do you have the Do you have the Hot Toys one? Is that Hot Toys never hot... made. Uh, they never oh, it made wasn't Hot Toys. It's it's Blitzway that it's made it. Blitzway, yeah, and it yeah. is beautiful. The figures as well as the station wagon, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah, and that that so, the, that wagon is about forty one inches long. It's huge. it's huge, Gabe. You got to see this damn thing. It's Joseph, huge. I'm gonna I'm up on this. I didn't I didn't know you had this. Um, so I um uh, I ended up upgrading it like screen accurate with some uh -huh. minor little touches but i'm gonna I'll, I'll send you some some info on that like the hose oh, yeah. i'll show Please. you where to get the hose and all that okay cool so you got alien stuff right yeah i think that's that's probably gonna end up going to make room for other things i'm not a huge aliens fan believe it or not that's one of the few movies that i never saw growing up Mm -hmm. And I only now saw it as an adult, and I, you know. I still haven't seen him. Is that the <laughs> car? I've never seen. It. I've never seen Alien. What, what is yeah. that? Yeah, what is that? Is that the Joseph? Is that the car? What? What is that's that? The, yeah, that's the armored personnel carrier. That was done by Heba Toys. Okay. How big are these? Huh? How big are these? Just scale. That's on. that. That vehicle is about eighteen inches long. Okay. Right, and then those those I had to. I, the alien figures I had to pose crouching because <laughs> because they couldn't fit the that, oh. that's uh, there's 21 inches of space there and it couldn't fit mm -hmm. in that space so so those are these are from Men in Black they were made by Factory Entertainment I love Men in Black absolutely mm -hmm. you know love the I mean the I mean the movies are fun oh, right absolutely. but but I love the designs the weapons the aliens. Uh, oh, and in yeah. fact, did I send you the picture of, oh yeah, it's, it's there. It's coming. It's yeah. That thing is the, insane. That thing is badass. This, this is, is a life-size bust of Rosenberg, the jeweler. And that was done by elite creature collectibles. It is a fantastic piece. Um, the face actually closes. And when it closes, you can put the glasses on. That's crazy. Um, look at look when, at the when it closes it, it's almost seamless it's it's incredible and that's real it's it's translucent resin for the skin real hair rooted hair uh all around the head and then the alien inside is just incredibly I mean, detailed the whole cockpit is detailed and lit it's just yeah. an amazing piece the weathering on it it's like the oil yeah. streak i mean yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but jo and Joseph, I, there is a little, a little bit more of a story behind that one, right? Because right. So, so okay. So, like I told you, I was not collecting life size busts, mm -hmm. and when this came out, I thought it was amazing. But I was like, I can't. I'm not getting something like that. I have no room. And at the time, I we didn't have a house, so I really couldn't buy this thing. And you know, yeah. But I missed out, and I always regretted it. And then I went to Monster Palooza in 2019 uh, down in Pasadena. And that was an incredible show. And while I was there, I met George Sohn, who's the owner of uh, Elite Creature Collectibles. And I was telling him about how much I love this piece and how I missed out, etc. And he told me, he said, believe it or not, I still have one in the warehouse. The person ordered it, but never paid the balance on it. Yes. And I will contact that person. If he doesn't pay it off, it's yours. So I had my fingers crossed. I'm like, God, I hope he, he doesn't pay it off. So anyway, so I was able to get it. That's and beautiful. It is an absolutely beautiful piece. That is a beautiful piece. Yeah. All right, hold on. We, we got more, guys. This isn't, I still have like four, file, like four whole files just full of stuff. Um, these I'm just going to go through because we kind of already saw these. These are just okay. some helmets that, um, that you 
but we kind of saw him in, in the background a little bit. So we, yeah. we kind of already I know. know. I sent you a lot of pictures of basically of over the year, over the right. two years. Like as I unpacked, I would just take pictures of stuff. And I, I think I sent you a ton of stuff. In fact, I, I can um, hear when we're done. If anyone's interested, I can get my camera up and I can walk around a little bit so you can kind of see, you know, the most recent. Absolutely. Yeah. So who who okay. did the, who did the 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 training helmet the Luke training helmet up on the top? Yeah. So that was okay. So this is really unfortunate. I don't know who the artist was. Okay. I purchased the helmet through the now defunct Force Forum website, okay. which was acting as a conduit for all these artists. And basically, the person running the Force Forum was taking orders, having the artists make the pieces, ship them to the customers, but the artists all wanted to remain anonymous because, mm. you know, things are not licensed. And and it's really sad because it's such a beautiful piece and I love it, but I don't know who made it. So a lot, a lot of viewers out there that are in the collection world, like uh, Gabe, that when it comes to the the helmets and whatnot, we, we know there's a Novus. We know that there's EFX mm. and pros, what is it? Prop Masters. Is that correct? RS, RS, RS Prop, prop Masters. Yeah, RS Prop Masters. Yeah, you, had, you, had yep, you had mentioned uh, about a company in Moscow. I can tell you, I've been around a little bit, but I've, until I met you, Joseph, I've never heard of that company before. Can you tell me just briefly? I know we're, we're running through this stuff pretty quick, yeah. but who is that? Yeah. So Armory Sorry. Shop. Armory Shop Props is yeah. a company based in Russia. Um, they have a workshop and they do uh, replica pieces of Star Wars helmets and they do original designs. Okay. And their original designs are spectacular. Um, but I, I got a couple of original pieces and a couple of replica pieces that nobody else was making. So, for yeah. example, First Order Snowtrooper helmet yeah, you know, Anovos had put that out for pre-order, and that was years and years ago. They dropped the ball; they never produced it. So I wanted to get oh. it to go with the rest of my first order stuff, and I got it from them. They do beautiful work. Yeah, uh, it's fiber, you know, fiberglass or resin construction, uh, so they're quite heavy, but they are not lined inside. And who are one of these? And I'm, I'm, maybe I missed it. Is one of these helmets made by them? Is that no, what? none of them oh. are. The two on the right, on the top, there are RS Prop Masters. Yeah, I could tell that. The Ray helmet is is no, from no. Anovos. Right, and then the, and the then Kylo. The, other two, Anovos, right? the Kylo is from Anovos. Uh, that's a Premier Line fiberglass helmet, right. and then the the Crimson Trooper is also from Anovos, but that's a ABS plastic construction. Right. Yeah. So Gabe, last, when when we did the after party and we mm -hmm. were running through his uh, the his workshop. Mm -hmm. they, we popped up. We did actually show a couple of those pieces that were actually from that company we were just talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, oh, that, that's right. Okay. The white ones. The ones that. Yes. Yeah, they were, yeah. I think you. I have pictures. We we might be able to to show some. Um, yeah, those, well, those were just absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll walk through amazing. and I'll show you the um, the ones that they did. The because the it's really the Macquarie Stormtrooper helmets that they did that are just I absolutely right. love. I wish they would do a Vader because. Okay, you know, so a little information on that. They okay. prototyped a Vader. Oh. Uh, they they have displayed their their prototype for it. It's beautiful, but they and that was years ago, and I contacted them several times to ask them about it. They basically told me we're having a really hard time getting the paint right. Mm -hmm. So you know the EFX Macquarie Vader helmet is done with this midnight that's called a midnight blue. But it's almost like an auto body finish, right? It's, right, it's right. an out finish. It sparkles, it has this pearlescent look to it. And so the area that the light is hitting is blue, but the rest of it is black. Right. Um, but that's a very difficult thing for them to replicate. They can't manage to do it, or they're not, you know, they haven't done it yet. So we're yeah. still waiting. EFX was spot on. I remember you telling me a story, Joseph, about another one that you had, uh, and there was a painter out there that was doing one. It was a custom, right? Uh, McQu right. McQuarrie one, yeah. Yeah. But so you, this, you was a, this was a, a a painter by the nick of uh, name of Nick Anzalone, and he's an incredible painter. He does beautiful custom helmets. Um, but I had ordered one through the Force Forum. 
He did it. He shipped it to me, but it got destroyed by UPS. I received it. It was shattered. And um, I actually ended up giving that to Randy Bowen. He wants to um, he wants to repair it and then do it with um, uh, hot rods flames on the side of the helmet. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So right, these let's... are yeah, yeah. So these are a few pieces that are from um, the that's the Mospeda, you know, the Robotech series uh, in the center from Kids Logic, and then the other one is from um, Over Overwatch, and then that's the you know Hulkbuster on the on the left there. That needs no introduction. Yeah, my daughter Haley. You you know Joseph how, oh, how know. my my little Haley Gabe I don't know if I've sent you pictures yeah but you, yeah you showed me some of, the, of her yeah stuff. so you know she's so humble and has these little we're getting ready to redo her room and she's got I mean a, literally probably thirty or forty different little toy you know Hulk Buster different scales I mean there's a lot, five fifteen dollar little deals and. I was telling my wife, hey, when we redo her room, we're going to take out all of that stuff and we're just going to get her the sideshow piece. <laughs> but I, I show Haley that and she's like, I don't want that, Dad. You know, it just blows me away how humble yeah. she is. That's beautiful, Joseph, that piece. I mean, I'm going to let, let, let's just show it because I I, I, I like that. I like, oh, that's I like cool. that, that you're teaching teaching your daughter well. Man, that's cool. On the fly, I'm, I'm, you're good. You're you know, you got to do it here. That's Let's, right. That's right. Gotta, let me. Uh, yeah, you know, it's crazy. You know, I, she comes over to her dad's gallery and we, I show her all this stuff. And oh, yeah, wow. that, that's her room. <laughs> yeah. In that, in that, that's, nice. it. That, that's little Haley. Thank you, Gabe, for bringing that up. No, but, but, that, but that's what we're talking about. And that's, that's the thing we were talking about at the beginning. So obviously yep. we're looking at this amazing collection that Joseph has and all that. But I mean, all of us as collectors could appreciate this. You know, that yeah. a little girl has in her room just so beautifully displayed. She's so proud of it. And it just yeah. gives me chills. Like it literally, like I look at this kind of stuff and it gives me chills because mm. I, the next generation of just collectors and the passion. And I, I love that. I just love it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Man. No, Gabe, I, I just want you to know that it actually makes me want to just bust out because, you know, my my daughter comes over and sees this amazing yeah. this standalone gallery, and she's so humble, bro. And that's that's her collection, dude. Yeah. And and, oh. and and her dad's willing to help her out. That's what yeah. she wants. These collectors out there, Gabe, and that's you. Just you can't hit it any better than you you're doing right now. And Joseph knows, but you know it, it does. I, and we're gonna say this every freaking episode. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big. The collection, it just doesn't. What is so important, and me and Gabe were talking offline about this, is that these people that just have these two action figures, yeah. what those two action figures did for that particular person, yeah. I don't care if you got a million dollars in the collection, yeah. but it's what that does for you, you know? And what we're trying to do, and Joseph knows this, Gabe is in Collection Wars, man, we're, we're, we we want to inspire our viewers to say, Hey, this is where we're at. This is what I want to do. Oh man. I, I didn't know about that. Or, or, Oh wow. That's a great idea on the, the building, the cases when they see Joseph's huge collection and they see the way out of this whole thing, they might've got an idea on how he discussed the lighting of his yeah. showing, you know, and that's what we're trying to bring is positivity and enjoyment of the collection. You know, there you go. she's got the collector well, bug. Yeah. Yep. She, uh, you know, all of these items, uh, you know, they're they're all beautiful in and of themselves, right? But yeah, it's yeah. really what they represent. That's right. Them. They represent yeah. the love that we have for the stories. Yes. Um, you know, for the things, for the nostalgia that, we, you know, we grew up seeing. Look, I mean, I have Transformers yeah. in there that are- That's why, know, I, that's why I brought it up because it, a, lot of, a lot of these bring so many memories just immediately, like- the right. Transformers, the Robotech. We were just talking about the the Robotech stuff. Yeah, it's and actually, Gabe, the I, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, once it's up, um, we'll definitely do a little uh, show and tell on it. It's a uh, one six scale Robotech cockpit, which was done by Kids Logic. It's just fantastic. 
Um, um, I can't wait. Lit, yeah, with a with an, an, an actual LCD screen inside that's playing scenes from, you know, from Robotech. It's yeah, it's crazy. And, just, and what, what are these? Are they who makes these? The the transformers. Okay, so okay, so. There's a variety of stuff in there. Um, so the busts up on top, some of them are Gundam busts, some of them are Robotech busts from Kids Logic. Some of those pieces uh, are Gundam uh, Gundam pieces made by Bandai. The mm. Transformers underneath, two of two of the larger ones are ones that I picked up in Japan. Um, mm. I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the company. Yeah. The other ones are actually the Takara um, you know, masterpiece toys. Mm. Now, and there are twenty. That you said the the clearance is twenty something inches, right? So twenty one inches. Yeah. Huge. So those the 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 those yeah. Some of these are pretty big, right? Like the mm -hmm. the, the Optimus and the Megatron, and then the Constructicon in the you know in the back there. Um, the thing is, is that what I you know I love about this is that I can display the the G one hot to, uh, the G one Transformers, you know, from childhood. But the other company that makes Transformers figures, which I've I've been collecting since they started, was mm -hmm. um, is three zero, and those okay. pieces, those are the film pieces. Now I don't have any of them out yet. I, I think I have yeah. one piece out. Um, those are just absolutely beautiful pieces. Wow. Also, I can't wait. And th that this is why this is great because <laughs> again, this is one third of Joseph's collection. So I <laughs> promise we're gonna have them back. Every yeah. time he puts some new stuff up, we're gonna have them back to show us. So this yeah. is so that's also Ro yeah, Robotech, that's from right? Prime One. And I mean, I love Robotech. So I this is it. the you know the the Guardian uh, mode of the you know of the the robot. And this is a huge statue that they yeah. did. It's incredibly, incredibly intricate, beautifully made, very dynamic. Uh, but the moment they announced this, I was like, I don't care how big this thing is. I, I'm definitely getting it. And now yeah. they're going to have the the actual, the robot, the companion piece, whereas yeah. the robot is fully formed. And uh, that hasn't you come out yet. I'm just waiting do you for also, it. Do you also collect um, Voltron or no? Not into Voltron. You have to ask. <laughs> oh, you I didn't even notice that. Okay, okay. I just haven't. I haven't seen yeah. any Voltron so, okay, pieces. So I'm none sure of my do. so none of my Voltron pieces are out. Oh, okay. But I have almost all the Voltron toys that were made. And this is okay. So here's a little side story. Yeah. I've loved Voltron ever since I was a kid, and my prize toys were the Voltron. You know the the ones that you could that they were die cast the lions and then you could assemble them right. and it was like it was my favorite toys to take it with me everywhere and then my mother heard some story on the news about how toys coming from china are being made with lead paint so she took them from me and oh, she true. returned them and that was it that was gone so it left this this void right in my in my heart and so almost every voltron toy that has come out since then i have gotten so whether yeah. it's the Bandai, you know, the, the, the Chogokin one that they did that, that is incredibly beautiful and so well made, or whether it's the Matty collector ones that they did where they're really large scale and they create a 24 inch Voltron yeah. or the sideshow Voltron statue that came out a couple of years ago, which I absolutely love that. I don't have it out, but it, it will be well, going up in one of the center islands because like 27 inches tall. Right. And we'll, we'll eventually, we'll, we'll eventually get to that once once you put those out all right yeah. so let's okay. let's these are some prime oh. one busts i'm not a huge fan of the um of the, the uh michael bay transformer designs uh mm -hmm. i really do love the designs from the new bumblebee movie which are kind of more g1 right. uh style but these busts are really beautiful and prime one does a beautiful job so because i have a lot of the three zero um figures from the movies mm -hmm. and i actually have some of the prime one statues i figured i'd put the busts in there to you know yeah. to even it out yeah get them in there all yeah. right so now let's move on to okay let me we already showed movies the room transformers okay star trek i know that holds a, a very special place yeah. in your heart so we're gonna let's go let's go through some of those so star so, trek is, yeah it's one of my first loves my dad 
used to watch it when I was growing up. And it's one of the things that we used to do together. So, yeah. So I have a large number of, so my, my, they're not really studio scale, but they're large scale ship models. Um, I would say about half of them are from Star Trek. I have a, lo a lot of Star Wars and then the rest are Star Trek. And this was done by John Eblen, again, who I met through QMX when QMX was, you know, the, the, the company that was um, selling these. Uh, but I started to work with John um, to kind of modify the ships he was making for me to kind of customize them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we became very good friends. He's an incredible person. Um, him and his wife are just wonderful people. And actually, my wife and I uh, took a trip to Florida. We spent some time with them. Um, he, yeah, he's an amazing artist and absolutely love uh, all the work that he does. Uh, this is the Enterprise D from Star Trek The Next Generation. That's a 36 inch long model done um, in fiberglass resin. Uh, has, it's fully lit. Uh, and it has all the effects. So like the phaser uh, firing on the, you know, on the surface, on the dish, on the ring, on the saucer section, yeah. the, the, the lights actually go around the ring and then come out to fire. It's just, it's a beautiful piece. Now, what you see there is mm -hmm. just the piece I took out to test, but there's actually an entire base with a mirror and mm -hmm. it's all finished and it has, a, you know, the Star Trek insignias yeah. on it. And it's just absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, just that the is, just, is crazy. Yeah. And then if you have a, the video of the NX01 he also made for me, um, I think I sent that to you. And a original yeah. series enterprise he made. It's they're just fantastic. But those videos at least show you a little bit of the lighting effects. Yeah. Um, Let me see if I sent it over. Um, hey Joseph, did you see yeah. the our last our, our our last episode with Kurt Kuhn? Yes. Did you see the, the scale of that original Star Trek ship? Yes, that, I saw that it. Was unbelievable. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Gabe, if you go down the next photo, there is the original series Enterprise that John made. That's oh, cool. cool. Yeah. So is that, the the video, you want me to show the video of this one or the or other? This, well, there's a video of that one and a video, yeah. a longer video of the NX-01, which has a lot of animation uh, to it. But these are very, very beautiful. And if... And if anyone's interested, John still produces, um, you know, custom model pieces. Um, he has a company called Eblin Works, and it's just, he's a fantastic artist. Okay, I got, I got, I, I'm sending them to my computer as we uh, speak. Okay. So this this reason, Enterprise is a reimagined version. So he basically did it with like Aztec paneling. So kind of if they had the money to do this in the original series, they would have probably done it this way. Mm -hmm. um, so we worked together because I have one of the master replicas ones, which oh, okay. is which, which is the original kind of version. But this is really beautiful. And again, you know, they have the beautiful the base and the, you know. So I want um, I want to tell a little story. Yeah. Uh, about uh, about the artist. Um, because, you know, I think a lot of us have had the experience where we've worked with, uh, people who maybe aren't very reliable, um, you know, where, you know, there are scammers out there or, you know, even companies that don't produce the stuff that they say they're going to produce or that you've paid for. Mm -hmm. Um, so back in the day when QMX was producing these, you know, John was working for QMX and was producing these ship models. They were doing a 2009 Enterprise, so the J.J. Abrams, you know, the reimagined Enterprise from that first movie in 2009. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love that piece. I ordered it. I waited for it because, you know, it's just John making these for all, and they take a long time to make. So I waited mm -hmm. three years, and then I received an email from QMX saying, sorry, we're no longer producing the ship. Oh, we fund you the money. And I was in, I was like, I've, you've had my money for three years. I've been waiting all of this time. Yeah. 
And now you're just telling me it's it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I later learned what had happened was they only had three more outstanding orders and the molds were shot. And yeah. they couldn't yeah. justify paying the money to remake the molds for only three more ships. Yeah. Uh, John, I contacted John Evelyn and I and I told him, you know, that I was really disappointed. John gave me his prototype. Wow. His wow. own version the first version they made you know he re you know repainted it you know made it because it was the one that was doing all of the you know the cons the you know mm -hmm. it was on the circuit so he he basically refurbished it to brand new and sent it to me and yeah, a lot that of kind of reliability you you just it's hard to find yeah yeah a lot, a lot of people don't know in the, the studio world in the model world is that every time that there's there's a, a new ship built in the mold that every time that there's a, a model that's cast out of that original mold, it deteriorates that original casting in of the correct Joseph. Yeah. And it deteriorates every time that you use it, it's losing its life and its detail. So yeah. it's eventually either going to go away or they're going to have to re redo it. Right. Yeah. 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 So there so there are a lot of the ships. Oh, this that's is yeah, this badass. is a beautiful one too. Damn, dude, that is so badass. That's crazy. Yeah. What is that out of? This is from Star Trek Enterprise. It's called it was a a kind of a prequel series that ran from I think in the early 2000s, 2000 okay. to 2004. Damn, sweet looking. Yeah, that is beautiful, crazy. beautiful piece. And then, of course, there are all the Star Trek props, which I love, you know, and there are a lot of them, right? The phasers, the right. tricorders, communicators. And I've started to unpack. Uh, you don't have any recent pictures, but I will show you some of those. Yeah, this is the refit Enterprise. This is a three foot long version of the one that Kurt Kuhn showed that he donated. That is what eight feet long or something Jeez. yeah that thing is absolutely amazing dude and by the way all of the lights you see there are being generated by the ship there's nothing on it right all that all of that is lights coming from the nacelles from the windows and it just it it creates its own environment yeah that was so beautiful yeah. And, uh, and joseph as far as your collection room goes how is mm -hmm. how are you gonna how are you gonna do that like where are these gonna go so, okay, so this is, they are all going to go in the center of the room. Mm -hmm. And and basically what I'm going to, I'm constructing an island with, well, it's it's more like a, well, I call it an island, but it's like mm -hmm. a standalone shelf system that is four feet wide and 18 feet deep that goes all the way to the, <laughs> that's, that's my wife. <laughs> Oh, that's very cool. Oh, thank okay. you. Tell her hello. Hi. <laughs> I, I, hey, just real quick, I'm going to say thank you so much. For, I know I steal a lot of your husband's time in the evening. I, <laughs> I, think, I do too, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't know um, she was watching. That's, that's awesome. awesome. I love it. So, yeah, so I'm creating a, a, a basically a, a, a rack, a display rack in the center of the room. It's going to be four mm -hmm. feet wide and 18 feet long that's going down the center of the room. And I'll show you here when I pick up the camera kind of where yeah. it's going to go. And it's going to be fully lit and fully encased in glass. And then all the ships are going to be going in there um, <laughs> because it's because it's wide open, right? So. <laughs> hey, 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 real quick, you got to chime in. What what does this mean that uh, you owe me big? Is this something we can't talk you, about? Or what, what no, I don't know. I don't know if she's talking to me or she's talking to you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I can't um, wait. Hey, listen, I can't wait to meet you guys in person, Joseph. Oh, sure. thank you. Me too. Me yeah. too. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, all so the center of the room is going to be devoted to all of the large pieces right whether it's the yeah. sand crawler or the star destroyer and super star destroyer <laughs> yeah. you saw or the master replicas pieces like the um like <laughs> yeah she means yeah. the two of you yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, yeah we're good so sorry about that yeah, we're good. <laughs> so um 
so all, all of those large scale ships are going to go in the center in, in the center display and it's oh, going so to be i mean it'll you'll be able to walk all the way around it actually so i think this is a great a great spot because we went through a lot of okay. the, the categories and maybe okay. this is a good time to kind of go around and and maybe show okay. us a little bit of because i know some of these pictures are, are not updated so i right I they are not so okay so let me go to the settings here and figure out how to turn the camera around and especially because a lot of people might have tuned in kind of in between the yep. segments and stuff so i see okay there we go can we start from the doors joseph come on i need i need that favor yeah. i need to do you want me to, to open start. the door well we're we, in the room already but this is, i know uh, but come on that's like such so, an impressive part of your room, man. <laughs> okay, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you can see the rest of the warehouse, right? Oh. Everything that's still, still getting see, unpacked. I knew it. I knew yeah. that's why I was going to ask you. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so as you as you come into the room, um, oh, there's a, a, yeah, it's, it's a big wide open space. But like I said, in the center right here, starting about five feet in is going to be this large display rack with, you know, like I said, four, four feet wide and 18 feet all the way to the back. And you'll have about four feet of space walk around all the way around it. And so you'll be able to see all of the, um, you know, all of the ships from, you know, as you walk around. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the left here, this is where you have the Star Wars section. So, Basically, you come in and then you have all the Star Wars statues up above here is where the jetpacks are going to go. The Boba Fett jetpacks and a couple of other pieces that I'm going to mount that I'm going to hang. Um, and then here are where all the Jazz Inc. dioramas are going to go. You can see that's one of the, you know, one of the oh, pieces. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. So and that's lit. It, it lights up and everything. But that's just the back. Then there's the other accessory pieces that go with it. Right. Yep. And then these are all Marvel statues. These are going to go in on the other side of the room with all the other comic statues. But the I need to adjust the shelving in order to accommodate them because they're just too tall. Mm -hmm. And then here you can see. Sorry, I'm, I have a chair here, so I got to lift this way up before I can bring it back down. So here's the helmet section. Yeah. And you can see all of the. All of the helmets, they, they, I basically crammed as many as I could in here, and they're going to have to get reorganized, and some are going to have to go. No. So. Can we see those McQuarrie? Yes. Uh, those are yeah. my favorite out of those. He did that to me. Yeah, I'm like, uh, excuse me, can you go back to the McQuarrie one? <laughs> so those are the McQuarrie helmets. Yeah, even the sorry, solo. I have the I have the figures in there from uh, you know the hollow chest figures from X plus, but those are I just put them in there so they didn't collect dust, but they're they're coming out. Yeah, but I think these Gabe are the McQuarrie yeah. helmets. And then this is also that's from Solo. That's also from Armory Shop props. Wow. Yeah, and then down there are more kind of Anovos and and then these are all the Force effects helmets that or sorry force effects lightsabers that are going to be going on the wall i had to unpack them and then this is the glass you know the glass tables that i put in for java and i i don't know i these are probably going to go or get reorganized and there's the tauntaun there's the newest edition i just unpacked that the the do back there's the Sideshow Grogu and some accessories that I got from Soul Inertia. Uh, and then here you can see all of the, you know, all of the blasters, right? And all of the props that I have that still need to get reorganized um, and labeled and put in acrylic under acrylic covers. And um, this is some of the lightsabers. Yeah. Wait, is and, that the uh, dual the props? Who who made that dual ray? The dark. <laughs> <laughs> that that's from that's from Saber Forge. Oh, that's a Saber Forge. Wow. Yeah, and it is beautiful, and it and it works. <laughs> Gabe, you're getting a cavity. <laughs> I, I am. I am. Hold on one second, guys. Let me let me do oh, this. No. I'm going to detach the 
phone from this tripod. <laughs> yeah. You're a great, Gabe. Uh, so I can. Okay. <laughs> you did that with Kurt the other day, dude. You're like, uh, wait a minute. So wait, let me get wait, wait, that's from roll the back. Back. roll it back. Did I just see a? No, no. Okay, <laughs> can... it's all right. Don't worry. Am about I back? It. I think we're we're good. Am I yeah. back? Yeah, you're back. You're good. Yeah. So these that's from uh, Vader's vault. That's a side. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, a Saber Forge piece. Um, <laughs> that's from Saber Forge. These are some. <laughs> what you're laughing because I'm just like yes, because I know and you. Know. I'm just like oh. And then of God. course, and then these are all the Force yeah. FX lightsabers that have to go Jeez. mounted on the wall. Um, this is a fan made Grogu that is uh, that was done by an artist on the RPF, and that's silicon, so it's incredible with he glass like glass eyes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the piece that I don't have out that is really fantastic is I have an artist who made a Jedi training remote mm -hmm. that that actually floats. Oh yeah, you sent me a magnetic you sent me a... Yeah, and it and it's lit up. It lights up inside, and the lighting is done via magnetic induction from the base. So there's no battery or anything like that. We're gonna, we're gonna look into that for the baby Yoda pod, right, Joseph? That's right. That's right. We're gonna figure out how to do that. If, if Lee, if Lee's still on here, he was giving me such a hard time because I was trying to convince him to buy that baby Yoda pod, and I, it took some convincing. But I think Joseph knows what's up. That oh, thing yeah. is for four hundred. We're, we're, we're gonna modify it a little bit. Yeah. This I just threw in here because I'm not sure Ooh. where to put it yet. I built this. Nice. This is one quarter scale model of the Valentino Rossi Yamaha motorcycle. It's an incredibly intricate piece, beautiful, but I'm going to have a motorcycle display outside of this room. So I just no. put it in there so it doesn't collect dust. And then um, these are Ooh, just some random track. pieces from movies. Yeah. This is going to be the film area, you know, the the, the, the pop that culture that, movie. What is that? That's, Battery's not included, right? Or what is, huh? what, what's the movie? What's that movie that little guy's in? This? That's yeah. Squeaks from Transformers. Oh, okay, okay. I thought yeah. it was that you know that I think was it called Batteries Not Included or that oh, I love that movie. Yeah. these are the I love that movie game. That that you're yeah. Yeah. This is from the Matrix. Oh damn. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece. These Who are made that? these Who are made that? these are Mega Man pieces, and then that's from I love uh, this. Halo. I think I'm gonna get I'm gonna be selling that. Uh I just don't really have that in my collection, so and then the men in black pieces that you saw. And then there's some Indiana Jones stuff. And then all my other Indiana Jones stuff is on the other side of the room. Um, Jurassic that's from, Park. That's Jurassic yeah. Park. That's from um, Super, Super 8. Super 8. Mm -hmm. These are from coins from, um, from John Wick. That's the skeleton key from yeah. Goonies. Oh, that's wow. The, I love that one. one. Tron Light Cycle. I the love that Cop Auto Nine in the back there. These are, um, and then of course this is where the ZF one is going to go in there. But this is uh, from these are Blade Runner pieces. That's the I love those. original Blade Runner blaster. And then behind it, I have the the one the stones, from the new ah. one from twenty forty nine. And this is really interesting. This is the concept that Sid Mead made for the you know the concept Blade Runner blaster. That's a beautiful piece. <laughs> Jeez. And you and waited a while, here, you, Joseph. You waited a huh? long time. You waited, waited a, long a long time. Long time. Yeah, that's from Chronicle Collectibles, and as far as I know, I'm. I think they're, you know, for lack of a better term, circling the drain as a company. So I'm. I'm glad yeah. that I got it. That's from Queen sure. Studios. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's the, the bat, the pod, and the the cars, and then of course. This actually, I just got this piece. This is from Randy Cooper. Wow. That's from Interstellar. Harsh, now, yeah. the amazing thing is, is that I thought this was a model kit. When I bought it from him, I thought I was buying a model kit, and he actually sent me his finished piece. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, and then so some more I'm Ghostbusters gonna... prop. Yeah, from the – let me just pause you right there. It says, I don't – Wayne Wayne's Butler says, I don't see a Millennium Falcon. Let we you you obviously have a Millennium Falcon, right? 
I have a I have a Master Replicas Falcon, and then I have the right here, which I probably should open up and check the EFX <laughs> diecast. So can, you, can you pan? Can you pan your boxes again? I just want to show people. Like I just you have there's so many. well. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> These are the ones that are here. Oh my God! Just <laughs> these are the ones that are here. Oh, I love this. But wait, there's still another storage facility with just as many. So, oh. so there's still still quite. A hey, I to. saw the ET, buddy. I just yeah. saw the ET. I saw yeah, ET. I'll, I'll show it to you. This is from Jazz Inc. This is a one six yeah. scale Batman v Superman. And it comes with all the parts to convert it into the uh, Justice League Batmobile, which I'm sure we'll be seeing more of in that Snyder cut. And then here we can, I can show you just is that the same ET that you just picked up, Michael? It it is, yeah, yeah. It is. Those are going to probably go in the movie room because they're made out of foam. Yeah, and that that'll be oh, something my my child will probably want to play with and destroy so oh, this i waited a time to get to i finally picked this up <sighs> from hollywood collectibles group yeah and then and then over here i really started to unpack the kind of the star trek props and i really really <sighs> so this is all the master replica ones and like so these are some of some of them are fan made like those cage communicators some are master replicas, some are wand company. And then some are just, you know, other props that I've picked up from fan, you know, fan made pieces. Um, and then these are like next generation pieces. So is that whole back display kind of going to be your Star Trek destination? Yeah. yeah. But again, a lot of this stuff like the bat left back there it's supposed to go mm. on that stand that you see right you know right there yeah. but i have to adjust the shelves because it won't fit right and then i have some larger pieces down there um and then some orville stuff and some more master replica stuff from star trek that i didn't have room for up there yet so i'm going to be you know there's the one little voltron that i have unpacked some <laughs> astro boy stuff Master the new Boy. Astro Boy pieces from Blitzway are incredible. Those are I have them. I haven't unpacked them yet, but mm -hmm. they're they're all cut away so you can see the inside of Astro Boy. And then here's some more Transformers, uh, Transformers stuff. Yeah. Sorry, and more Robotech. And Gundam. Wow. And then over over in the corner here, I'm gonna have a, a few like real space pieces and some old sci-fi stuff Doctor is that from the, the new master replica yeah stuff? the, sh the short-lived the yeah. short-lived new master replicas uh that's where, that's where your hal 3000 would have went that's oh, well what? actually the hal 3000 would have gone on the or hal 9000 would have gone on oh, the 9, yeah. Not because it was functioning right? right so i was going to use it to turn on the lights and things like that yeah. and then you know this is just it's just a lot of this stuff has to be reorganized and labeled and you know placed on risers and right. you know made made to be more museum like right um, um these are, just, these are um, can kole you know Jap japanese anime stuff i've just i was always fascinated right. by this because only the japanese would young women and saddle them with battleship parts <laughs> Yeah, that's so funny. I just that was fascinating. It's just no, your your collection is is just insane. I uh, I you know what it's I and because we've went through a lot of this stuff, so you you know the, yeah. the people have been watching since the beginning, um, kind of already seen a lot of this stuff, but right. it's just so impressive to see. And and I think the scale that's the part because you see a lot of this stuff and you think oh you know it's a shelf it's small. But oh, is that the from the new one or is that the that's SP? The, that's the new one. <laughs> okay, because uh, well, I have I, I have the entertainment the factory entertainment one the right. the one that with the top with the acrylic top. Yeah, and then here is that's the <laughs> Bell Diary. Gabe, <laughs> I just I didn't I have never seen. Hey, hey, to our viewers out there, look, 
It's not just you guys. It's us too. Look at Gabe. <laughs> Gabe, you need an option, bro. You got some drool right here. It's just, yeah. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. That's but like hilarious. I said, a lot of this is not very organized right now, but, but the pieces speak for themselves. I mean, these are just, you know, that's Taurus Studios. Yeah. In the back is a King Arts. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, I have to decide because I have the EFX Thor helmet, too which I think is actually taken from the original. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably mm -hmm. going to, to put that up. Do you have, the, the, do you have the, the mallet, the, um, yep. The Thor, the, mm -hmm. the Molnir. I figured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There so that, that's amazing. So Gabe, let me ask you, yes. uh, in this, Expensive. Can you can you just do, just, do, just do a three sixty? I, I <laughs> hey okay. hey Gabe, so, I love it. So I I know you can't pinpoint one, but if you had to, what's your favorite, bro? Honestly, you know, obviously, you know, I love Star Wars. I love that. I, I mean, obviously, I would take his DeLorean, right? Number one, <laughs> but that's not necessarily you know in the same genre. Um, I would have to say that that piece right there, that yeah. black piece, it's just so impressive. Like, yeah, I, before, and I thought I thought I saw it one year, either at Comic Con or Wonder Con, one of one of the cons. I could have sworn that I've seen it before, and it's just so impressive because it's just so lifelike. Yeah, That's probably my my favorite piece so far. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's a fantastic piece, Crazy. and the, I mean the hair. It's just. It's mm -hmm. Do you have Joseph? Do you have the the Independence Day alien bus from? Um, or do you like Independence Day or not? I I do, but I don't have anything from them. I, I there was nothing artistically that spoke to me from that no. movie, so I don't. You know, I don't yeah, really. There, there was a company that made this like life size bust of the alien, and it looks all slimy and, and it just looks. Yeah. Real. Well, actually, so so uh, speaking of that and men in black. Yeah. So because I have the weapons here and I have the bust, um, mm -hmm. a friend of mine who, who lives nearby, who's an incredible artist. Um, his name is Kevin Gorby and he actually has a company called Luna's puppets. He does a lot of, of, of really incredible, um, you know, puppetry work, sculpting. He's making an animatronic Grogu right now for himself. Wow. Uh, he actually is one of the people who designed the um, the drive for the BB-8, you know, mm. for um, yeah. you know, for people That's who cool. build like the, the R2-D2 Builders yeah. Club for the BB-8 Builders. Yeah. Um, anyway, he's going, I've asked him to sculpt me a silicon um, squid baby for Men in Black. You know, the one that, that yeah. Will Smith delivers in the back of, yeah. The, yeah. of the car. Yeah. So that, oh. I think is going to be pretty incredible and i'll put that just under the rosenberg bust and, the, and joseph yeah i guess i'm gonna i'm gonna hit you with that same exact question what what do you think what's your favorite piece or what's your favorite section or is it kind of just like the whole thing oh man um okay so i'm gonna flip the camera back you guys have probably had enough of this so. No, 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 no. Joseph, <laughs> we're, we're two hours in. You really think we have enough? I mean, come on. We could yeah. spend. By the way, days um, in here. Here, here are here are a couple of you might appreciate. That's the Leia. That is from Saber, Saber Forge. That's the mm -hmm. Leia um, hilt. This is an actual. So this is an actual. Hmm. So that's an actual. Um, functioning one and then yeah. i have the the hilt from kr sabers which is oh, sorry here let me turn that off and then this is the new mandalorian one that they made which is also beautiful hmm. it's a it's basically a mandalorian inspired lightsaber and then Very here cool. you can see the the Shira Imwe's staff from Rogue One. Yeah. Now, and uh, yeah, and a couple of other pieces. Like I said, I'm actually making racks to go 
to yeah. acrylic racks to mount along the wall here yeah. and here. And so all of the lightsabers will get put upright like pool cues. Yeah. Yeah, I look forward. I look forward in the future to seeing. I know you've got an extensive collection of studio, and and as you know, I'm really big into the studio. I know that you. I was talking to Michael Planty the other day about some of the pieces you acquired from his personal collection. Yeah, and you, you've never even brought that up to me. So I look forward to seeing that stuff when you get your center. Yeah, uh, your, I, uh, your... I, yeah, Michael. Michael Plante is an uh, incredible guy. Enjoy yeah. talking to him. I purchased yeah. a few pieces from him in the past, yeah, and we've too. been good friends ever since. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's, yeah. I think he's, he's, he's gonna be he's gonna be our next guest, right, Michael? Yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, we've got a couple lined up. We've got actually two. We got Jeff that's gonna be on here shortly. So between Jeff, Michael, and then of course we got Tom Spina that we're getting ready to have on pretty quick. Oh wow! Oh, that's yeah. that's great. Well, you know, yeah. Gabe and I have been. You know, we've been been uh, painfully debating getting that tauntaun. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. I decided there was there was just no way. I my yeah. plan was to my plan was to put it um you know put it up on the wall here, but with the jetpacks and everything, I just think it'll it'll just be too much. Yeah. You need the dark <laughs> saber. Hold on, hey, Gabe. Hey, Gabe uh, too much. Joseph, they said <laughs> too much. you need the dark saber. Do you already have a dark saber? Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so that, come on, guys. So, <laughs> Let me so, uh, the so I, I don't I don't have it yet. I ordered the Force FX one, mm -hmm. but I have a very interesting plan to modify it that will make it look absolutely incredible. I don't want to say right now, don't but say it. Uh, when I when I do it, uh, I'll show it to you. It should be pretty mind blowing. Awesome. Yeah, well, so. Joseph. I think yes. We, I, I mean, unless anybody kind of on watching has any last request, I mean, this isn't the last time you're going to be on here. I'm sure you're going to be on here plenty of times. So we'll have plenty of times to, to kind of go into more detail into some of the pieces. Uh, again, I, rightfully so, we took two hours to go through. And, right. and I yeah. sped you through it. I was going like, come on, let's, let's go, let's go. And we literally could have split this up in segments. Um which it kind of is, right? This is the first segment of showing one third of your unbox collection. And as you guys saw, and if you are tuning in now, go back and you need to watch these <laughs> full two hours because yeah. you need to see, like, I mean, I'm sure Joseph could, because that that's the part that when you flip that camera around, I see the boxes, I literally, like, I just, like, yeah. <laughs> up, like it's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure we're gonna get, you know, some more some more footage, and I, I know we're gonna have you back plenty of time. So well, let me just say, um, like I said, it's a it's an honor to be on here. I'm glad I I could share this with everyone. Uh, you know, the 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 most beautiful things in life are the things that you can share, and yeah. and it gives me the greatest pleasure to be able to share this with everyone. Um, and if anyone has any questions or wants any ideas or wants to know how I did things, I'm happy to help, happy to answer any questions for anybody. Um, like I said, you know, the thing about displaying stuff like this mm -hmm. is that if it's cluttered or cramped or disorganized, it's, it, it's really not enjoyable to look at. That's yeah. kind of why I was apprehensive about showing it at this point, because it's really going to go through a full transformation into a, right. a museum. But, but but the point of doing it now is to show people kind of yeah. how I approach things, how we all approach things. Yeah. And if, uh, if anyone needs any help, then I'm happy yeah. to, you know, happy to help. You're a good person, Joseph. Thank you for that. Yeah. Saying. Thank you so much for showing us again. I, and I, we know, right. We, we saw your, 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 your workshop, like you're very detailed, you're very, you know, very organized. So I know, I understand that this probably took some, some courage to show us all this, <laughs> but I yeah. think it's very important. It really is because yeah. I think as, as collectors, you know, we, we get to a point where we're fortunate enough to have a space to display our stuff. Right. So you, people get to that point where you're like, wait a second, I have all of this stuff. How am I going to display it? Where am I going to display it? And I think it's great to see, kind of the beginning stages for you because your collection is going to be 
one of the best collections out there. Absolutely. Yeah. By yeah. far. I guarantee. So it's 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 an honor to have seen it at this stage because Thank it you. really is. It's it's at yeah. its infancy almost, even though it well <laughs> well, I get to collect and display all of this, but yeah. the true thanks goes to all the artists who made this happen. Absolutely. Uh, all of the incredible artists that I got to meet uh, along this journey. Yeah. Uh, and then all of the other wonderful people involved um, in the hobby, like you guys, uh, like the other people I mentioned, like my friend George Medina over at MCE. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, that's really been the most incredible part of this experience. Yeah. Okay. is being able to meet people like you guys and share all of this. Absolutely. So, and thank we, you. And we appreciate it so much, Joseph. And I know, and we apologize to, to your wife too, for <laughs> giving you for, for two hours, especially with the- all our wives, Gabe, all our wives. So. All, yes, yes. This is, <laughs> this is an apology to all our wives for- um, yeah. 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 By the way, yeah. I just saw that I noticed uh, someone had posted a question. Where were the floor lamps from? Yeah. Those are those are from Think Geek. Oh, OK. Yeah. Got it. I'm Ooh. not sure they make them anymore, but that's where they're from. <laughs> Jeff, see, look at Jeff. See, we apologize to, to his family, too. He got so distracted. He forgot to make dinner. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, good. thank you, Jeff. Oh, man. Yeah, and, so, and I, I want to just real quick jump in. I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to jump in and say to uh, once again to all of our our viewers watching on a Saturday evening you know when when they could be doing other things it means a lot to Gabe and I and and you know the people that are are participating on the show like Joseph it means a lot to us and 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 we're very humbled and please we ask that if there's some content that you want to see we've got some really crazy cool stuff coming up Gabe and I and and we look forward to showing you guys in the near future. However, if there's some other things that you guys um, are interested in or want to see or want to comment about, reach out to us and we'll do the best that we can to accommodate. So we're doing the best we can. And man, it's overwhelming, right, Gabe? It's crazy. We just kicked this thing yeah. off and it's like, man, it's overwhelming actually, but I'm so pumped. It's like full time for me now. I'm so excited. I love this. So, yeah. Well, thanks again. I appreciate you having me on and yeah. I look forward to joining you guys again at some point in the near future. Absolutely. Welcome anytime, Joseph. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, Joseph is going to be one of those regulars that he's always going to have a link to the show just in case he wants to jump in and yeah. uh, drop some, drop some knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you'd never know Gabe that he, that he's a shy kind of, Re, you recluse kind of yeah. guy, right? I mean, not at, all. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Hey, I, you're I, professional, Joseph. I love it. Thank you. Thank very you. informative. Very. All informative. right, guys. So, yeah, I think we should we should wrap it up. Let yep. everyone uh, get to bed and, and <laughs> big dinner and go back with their family. Joseph, yeah. again, thank you so 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 much for sharing your collection with us. It's an amazing collection, and we're looking forward to to seeing it complete. Um, eventually. So thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you, Joseph. Tell, hey, go hug that beautiful little girl, baby of yours, and tell the wife thanks once again. Yes. I will. Um, I will. So guys, thank you so much again for for joining us. Um, make sure you you subscribe. Obviously, if you haven't subscribed already, because we we have a lot of great interviews coming up, a lot of great collections coming up, um, a lot of. In, again, insiders, a lot of people that normally you don't see their faces, they're not really out there in the public, but are crucial to, to this industry and to collecting some of the stuff. So definitely subscribe, make sure, because sometimes we're dropping some videos midweek um, because we have to pre-record them. So um, <laughs> yeah, Michael, any, any last words before we log off? No, I don't think so. Just, you know, thank you once again to the viewers out there and some really, really cool uh, future episodes. I mean, we've got, I mean, we're, we're actually, I mean, we're like booked like two months of, of content, really, really cool content. And, and I know Gabe will tell you guys, all of you guys that are, are reaching out to us, it means a lot, you know, that these, it's yeah. very humbling mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it just, yeah. it's 
But I love it. I love that. Yeah. And and some of you know I've reached out to a, a couple of you guys already too to yep. to join us just because again I the passion that you have for you know th this this stuff and you know obviously you guys also have some amazing collections that we would love to to talk about it and see um, yeah. so yeah I I love it I love that it's it's a it's a little community it's a family right the, yeah. especially the Star Wars collecting well I mean we really are a a little family so. Yes. Thank you guys. Yeah. And I just want one other thing, uh, Joseph, nothing but love to you and your family. Thank you so much once again. And Gabe, you know, I want to thank you personally, dude. I'm so glad that you're my partner in the, in this, this new endeavor that we've, we've, uh, are accomplishing. And I want to thank you personally. I don't know if all the people out there, the viewers know that the time and the hours that you put in on the editing side of things and, 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 and putting that all together, you do a, freaking fantastic job and really appreciate you gabe thank you i appreciate that michael and no, i i really do and i'm really happy we're, we're doing this and yep. happy to see all you guys and hopefully one day we'll get to see each other in person and yeah part of so. absolutely <laughs> okay, all right guys Have a good well night. thank you everybody that joined us thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week i can't wait yeah all right guys have a good night. Night, brothers.